And here we go. We have liftoff. Propulsion continues to be normal. Our CPA chamber pressure looks good. Following up. Unfolds to go. Indeed. We rise together back to the moon and beyond. This is methane to be igniting the flare, correct? Yikes. You bet. We don't need any more of these. Well, welcome everybody to another exciting day at Starship. Oh my word. Yeah, okay. Alex Art, um, that's the rocket for you all um, in the fog because it's very helpful. We, we spent no expense spared on our graphics team here. As you can now see where the rocket is, thanks to Alex's amazing drawing. Thank you, Alex. That's amazing. Right. Starbase. So it's wet dress rehearsal day. It's. Um, uh, basically, I, how can I be serious about a wet dress rehearsal with that on the screen? Okay, right, better. We basically got a wet dress rehearsal attempt two today. They tried it early in the week, and we got as far as a small liquid oxygen load on the ship first, which was weird, and then stopped, and then they gave up on it, and they're going to try again today. So today will be like launch day. That's what wet dress rehearsals are. They are basically all the controls on panel. They will go through an entire countdown. They will fuel the vehicle. And then they will go to a T0 without the engines igniting. And we'll probably get a water deluge test like last time. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go through a full dress rehearsal for the launch day of the third flight of Starship with Booster 10 and Ship 28. Thankfully, you don't have to listen to me all the time because we've got people joining us. Say hello, Adrian. Hello, everybody. I am I was about to say, like, hey, we couldn't already see some activity on the meth inside there. And then the Pope went stop. And now it started again. What timing. But yeah, uh, thanks again, Alex, for that amazing illustration there. That really helped. And, You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> thank you. And uh, <laughs> yeah, as, as you can see, we have a bit of a, a Vandenberg situation going on here in, in Boca right now, which uh, some views being a bit fog occupied. Let's say it like that. Uh, but we'll see sure if that situation. Is yeah, maybe maybe they moved the whole thing. We'll see. Yeah, maybe this is Vandenberg. Yes, you heard Alex there, responsible for the intro graphic there. Thank you, Alex, for that. <laughs> Are we totally that graphic? Are we really, like, is, is, that, is the minimum burden of, of proof to call it a graphic? Is that, is that already reached? I wouldn't call it a graphic. I would just call it a really poor drawing. Let's put it that way. <laughs> what, what I would say is that there's been a lot of complaints on X overnight about the artificial intelligence doing special graphics, which might put some of them out of employment. Alex just proven that we'll still need humans because I don't think artificial intelligence can get to that level of Alex's art there. I'm going to guarantee it. That's another level. That's, that's 30, 40 years into the future. Yes. Yeah. I'd also like to thank other people involved in this as well who may not be on commentary because they are involved in this live stream and that's Sean putting all these cameras out and of course Mary's there as well always ever present and always have ever helpful I can't say the words ever helpful there we go and Kevin Michael Reed behind the scenes pushing buttons and changing scenes and telling us all to, to get back on topic <laughs> thank you so moving quickly on let's just also, note some programming notes that if you've got any questions, you just put them into chat without no space flight, then your question, they'll turn up in a panel and they will do our best to answer those questions. Sometimes the same question will come in from several people and we'll answer one of them to count them all. So that's the way we do it. So if you don't get your question answered, it's just so many questions. We'll do the best we can with them. I'd like to thank some people to start with straight away, though, because frankly, before the stream even started, um, supported us by saying, I just wanted to show some support for my favorite live stream team. He didn't know I was on. <laughs> Whoever he consists of. There you go. Whoever it consists of. And you're all the best. Except to Ship 26, you're the worst. What a great comment. Well done, Rankly. Both for your support and your accuracy of comments. Orion has gifted five red team memberships. Thank you for doing that. And Sean Place too much has gifted a red team membership. That's something you'll see today. And on live streams that we have an amazing community that will gift memberships. 
to people in chat. It's just one of those things where they say, okay, we're all a community. Some of you aren't members. Some of you might want to be members, but you can't afford to be members. Here's a gift of membership, and you get a month for free. And not only do you get content as a red team and above member, but all member levels get access to the member multi-screen, which is in the link at the top of the chat, which is a pinned comment at the top of the chat right now. And if you click that, you'll get a nine-box 4K multi-screen madness, as I've described it, where you can watch it as a control room. A lot of people have two browsers open and will have that control room open. The chat in there is obviously just member only, so it's very kind of like a lot calmer. And also you can have the audio playing from this stream at the same time. So you get the best of both worlds. There we go. There's a member multi stream. You got a preview for it there. So that's your little control panel. So you can pretend you're like one of the controllers who will be on console today during a wet dress rehearsal. Okay, Adrian, do we have some questions? Oh, like we your have. Own personal mission control. I, I will throw this first one to Alex because this is such an Alex question. Oh, dear. Uh, what are. What are some major upgrades done to S28? From what I remember, S24 and S25 were basically the same. Thanks. Okay, boy. Um, the, the, the thing is, there are so many little details that have been um, changed from Ship 25 to Ship 28. That is a bit complicated to remember all of them, but there are some certain difference that, differences that you can see, like... Things like, for example, the tiles are the, uh, a lot, excuse me, are a little bit different for Ship 28, and they have also been take, taken care of more than on the previous two vehicles. And and we all saw how Ship 25 shed a lot of um, tiles during its ascent portion. So it is really one of those things that they really cared about on this uh, ship instead, because. This this has a really good chance of going through through re-entry, right? So they they wanted to to have it as mo as much reliability as possible. But things, for example, the flaps uh, they used to have like a cover on on the leeward side. Now it seems like they don't get that thing. Uh, the vents on the tanks have changed as well. They have added uh, they have removed the cowbell vents that were present on the locks tank, and they have instead actually added uh, cowbell vents on the nose cone of the ship which we don't know what it is for, but basically they, they are on the vents for the for the header tank. Why they put those vents there uh, as cowbell vents, we don't really know, because they were already there before, but now they have modified them in that way for some reason. And and apart from that, the, the ship used to have like one single starting antenna. I, I believe it was in the payload bay hatch. So not the door, but like the access hatch for people to get into the payload bay. That's where it used to be. And I believe now it is four upgraded antennas that they have located on the nose cone of the ship. Uh, another difference as well, I guess, is while Ship 24 and Ship 25 had, had a, a payload bay section and a payload bay door, it was welded shut. This is the first ship that is going into full stack configuration and it has a an actual payload bay, an actual uh, payload bay door, and it is not welded shut. So that is an important di differentiator here because I believe Elon said that they want to test the door and they want to test the pest dispenser while in that coast phase in space. So those are some of the major things. Again, there are other little details here and there that have changed as well, but those are some of the some of the things as to what else they have they may have changed uh to solve the issues on flight two we really don't know um there are some indicators that they seem to have modified some of the plumbing on the aft section maybe to dump the liquid oxygen a little bit safer uh but boy uh it could it could be for other for for a whole different thing like there are some theories about what it could be for but yeah there's there's some other things that we have seen on the ship that may be to to sort of alleviate the the, the whole issue with a with a second with a second flight and booster 10 is actually a little bit more or less like booster 9 in terms of the of the structures i know they didn't ask but just in case um and but but for example the common dome is the elliptical dome the one that is flatter than the previous ones that they were building um the aft dome and the forward dome they are the same but the common dome the one in between the tanks that is uh the flat version they have also changed the starting antennas they have added reinforcements here and there 
Uh, the hot staging ring is a slightly different. It's overall the same, just slight differences between the previous one and this one. So yeah, it's just slight differences here and there, but my guess is that these were done for a reason, right? So I guess they are better uh, than the previous stack. And so that's that's the important thing, that they get better rather than, than worse. There we go. What a what a short and uh, very, very, like, uh, quick answer to this question. <laughs> I mean, I we, will, we, will literally, Thank you. <laughs> we are literally making a video about this as we speak, so, like... <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's gonna take a very a very long video <laughs> to explain all of these changes. Adrian, maybe you could give us an update on where we stand for the people joining, because we're where people join all the time, as you would expect, with a live stream going out, people yes. will eventually catch up. So maybe we could do a quick status update. Uh yeah, let's let's summarize, I guess, where we are here. So why do we think it's a wet dress rehearsal? Well we have we have Mary, and uh, Mary was informed about an evacuation. So she uh, was uh, told to uh, leave the village, which means that um, the village is part of the potential danger zone for today's test, which uh, always indicates a higher propellant load. And we also got a SpaceX tweet a few days earlier that, no, uh, that confirms they are going for a flight light-like rehearsal, which is wet dress rehearsal. Uh, so we basically have everything in place. And there we can also see the... Uh, closure point they usually use for wet dress rehearsals. So, uh, to the right, actually. The left one will be evacuated later. The right one is the the a bit far, far more out uh, point for road closures because, well, if that's a blast area, you also don't want to have a sheriff there, right? Um, so, yeah, all, everything's in place here for wet dress rehearsal today. We are looking at, uh, at the first signs of that. We see the tank farms pulling up, and if everything moves ahead or so we will we are probably talking about a t0 around noonish like a simulated t0 around noonish but we will have to see how the evening develops of course uh they they started very early i think their first klaxon played around 4 a.m this this morning 4 to 5 a.m this morning uh about the pad clearing so uh we had we had quite a morning already and uh everything looking good so far Maybe we could have a look at what we're venting right now with uh, the wonderful illustrations of Alex. Here we go. We're getting the vents here. Alex, maybe you want to talk and draw at the same time? <laughs> See, the thing is that uh, it has a little bit of delay because it needs to go on a, on a long path. But I can start talking about it. So we're going to see here these two subcoolers there. Uh, the one on the left, this is for liquid oxygen. And the other one is for uh, basically methane, LCH4. And those two, the one on the left is already venting. The one on the on the right seems to come up a little bit later, but you can see already there's like some frosty, you can see some condensation around. The fog doesn't help, but at least you can sort of squint a little bit and you can see it there. And and so those two were waiting for them to become fully active, to become uh, fully frosted. And the thing about that is that they fill them with liquid nitrogen so that they are they are able to subcool the propellants. They don't use the the propellants are not at the boiling point. They need to be subcooled. They basically reduce their temperature below the boiling point so that they can fit more in the tanks because they are densified. In uh, when when you cool them below their boiling temperature, then uh, they get denser. And so that's one of the things that we're looking here right now with that pop vent that I that I mentioned before. This long stream of of venting. And so um, that's one of the things that we're looking re here right now. That tank farm slowly is pulling up and so the next thing that we should that we should see after that obviously is uh going into the olm vent is not the pope vent because you'll see here on the on the illustration i guess it's right behind it this this view is a little bit confusing but the other view that we have on the south doesn't really cannot see the rocket <laughs> so i'm using this one but it is sort of around there and shortly after we're also going to see a vent from the tower as well those two vents are related with a chill down of the propeller lines that go to the overall launch mount and to the tower that is in preparation for loading propellant and so that's going to be the next step after we see the tank farm you know fully spooling up and and coming to life and so that is sort of the next few steps that we should be looking for and once those fences disappear, that's going to be our indication that they're pro the they're loading propellant load the one on the tower sort of comes in and then comes out and then comes in again before that propellant load uh happens like it, it's a bit more more 
cyclic, I guess. But the OLM vent, once it comes in and then it, it goes out, that going out means they're starting the propellant load sequence. So that is what we're looking for in the next few hours. We'll see when that propellant load starts. Awesome. Some more thanks. Wilbur, guys, doing the best to keep up. So grateful for what you all do. Seems so much coming soon. Yes, now that's a good thing, Wilbur. Thanks, first of all. But also, this is the third flight of Starship. We're going to expect my comment in a few years' time to be we're on to the 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th launch of Starship. This is the way we're progressing with this. The cadence is going to increase all the time. Especially this year, and potentially, especially the year after, we'll talk later about the additional pads that may be coming into play, such as today's news that Alex will talk about later, which is the LC-37, uh, the Delta IV pad, which has been taken over. It's an option for SpaceX Starship, and of course they've got Slick 6 at Vandenberg, so there's lots coming in the second tower at Starbase, to say the least. Brianna, uh, hey NSF, is there any issues with doing a wet dress rehearsal when the weather is wet? water freezing on the booster for example thank you brianna um any thoughts about the weather conditions alex is chuckling so i'm sure alex has got thoughts because <laughs> uh, we have an upcoming twist episode where i where i do some sort of uh joke about this but yeah i guess it's it's a truly it's, it's truly a wet dress rehearsal because they're they're getting wet today oh he's not on what's yet. that <laughs> was was that an issue so bringing in shuttle here uh was that an oh, issue hello. for like like shuttle like bad yes. weather was was that an issue for shuttle uh launch or, or, or test operations yes it it was in respect to they could go through a countdown when it was raining uh, that was not a problem but they had to have what was called a red team late inspection team go to the pad with binoculars while the vehicle was fully loaded which was always amazing um and actually check the external tank for any ice ball buildups from that not only from the condensation of the tank but also from any wet weather conditions because any large pieces of ice coming off the external tank during ascent could hit the tps on the orbiter and that obviously would be a bad thing and the other consideration with weather constraints it may be okay just to launch but they had to have good weather for rtls abort options now the rtls a return to launch site was more a case of trying to get the orbiter and the crew over the SRB recovery ships for bailouts rather than actually any ambitions of getting back to the landing site. But that was a weather change. They had the SCA, uh, the STA, which is the shuttle training aircraft, do pretend landings at the shuttle landing facility just ahead of launch to make sure the conditions were right. So there's those weather conditions in play. I want to give a sh quick shout out to my good friends that I've not been able to point out here. Yes, it will not be a problem if the rocket gets wet today, because that it, it, just move on. But yeah, yeah. Um, in in general, the uh, we do not expect Starship to have this problem, right? Because Starship, like, it's a stainless steel body. I do not think water on it will that big be a big of a consideration. I think, however. With like with rain, for example, you sometimes get other factors that could be a problem, uh, either wind or potential lightning. Like these could be problems in a in any wet dress rehearsal configuration, uh, while rain itself might not be. Very One of the so. things to consider, because um, uh, it, it was just coming to my mind that actually the first flight of a Starship, uh, the first attempt that they did it. It got aborted because water got in into one of the uh, of the pressurization lines for the oxygen tank on the booster, and it froze when it, they started the propellant load of the booster. And so they had to detank and abort the, the launch, obviously, and go out there and fix the valve because the valve basically got water in, and it was just it it's, it got stuck on on the pressurization system. So it is true that it shouldn't affect, but the the rocket needs to to be also built uh with that in mind right that you know if something for whatever reason fails and, and some valve gets stuck due to the water then that's a problem so the, the rocket needs to be built uh so that that doesn't happen very good oh there's some nice um big events there in view in enhanced view that's very nice alex which vents it does i believe that's the methane subcoolers very good i think so because kind of looks like them but i don't yeah, know because it's very zoomed in yeah yeah oh this is trailer right so yeah it, it should be the methane subcoolers very nice and, and uh, 
Just to point out, some of the white sometimes things you see on these subcoolers might be insulation. For example, on the left thing, mm -hmm. uh, on the left, you see, oh, the pipe is white. That has to be ice. No, that's insulation. That's that. That's. Uh, but there are also sometimes ice on that. So it's it's more a matter of seeing the progression going on than just looking for white spots. That's. <laughs> Uh, that's just something that you have to always have to uh, be have, have a mind here with uh, the subcoolers. I'm not sure why they are not fully insulated. Um, at some point, just SpaceX just decided, okay, that's that's enough insulation, I guess. So. <laughs> More thanks again, Curtis Green. These are names I recognise every single time. Um, gift a red team member. We've got lots of new members thanks to these people. RC Horseman gifted five red team memberships. Uh, Glenn. Griffiths uh, gifted one red team membership. Uh, the nerdy one gifted five red team memberships. Again, we, I, I tend to sound monotonous when I read these off. We get so many of them, that's why I just read off a list because there's so many of them coming in live. It's just amazing support and appreciate. And I always want to make sure those people are recognized in chat because they are helping people who may be massive fans of the channel just to get a membership for a month for free with an obligation and they get extra content and extra access to things such as the multi-screen and what have you. So very much appreciate Thank you. Um, Andrew asks another vent question. The cowbell vents are on, are on these so that we can see the heifer gun missing in the fog and you can see where she is. Starship wrangling. You know what? I was reading that off before reading it through. Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> it's worth reading out though. Um, Larry asks the elephant in a room question. When do you think Starship will launch? Oh? Oh. Hang on. Are you looking at the same thing that I'm looking at, uh, Adrian? Yeah, it's a tower vent, right? It's the tower and the OLM vent. Both are have begun already. That's so early. Yeah, that's a that's a good thing. That's actually the thing that I was talking about that we should see next. And we're seeing it next. I would have, I would have not expected this before like 10:30 local time, uh, at the earliest. This this seems early. Like this is fast. Yeah. Right. Based on this event we're seeing now, when do you think the earliest we'll start seeing Proplet? Before 11, like somewhere around like 10:45, maybe we'll a bit earlier. About central time even, for even the benefit before of that. Chat. Uh, central 10:30. Yeah, central, all central. central. Time. Like this could mean they are they are starting prop loading at around ten thirty or so. Very good, and that is central time. Just so everyone's looking at the clock on the left hand side because when people give a time, it could mean anything. So that's central time we're talking about, and all time we talk about the times yeah. of events. It's the CST, which is a clock in the top left hand corner. And. And that's the thing, the, the, this OLM vent, so as I was saying before when I was, I was doing the whole Alex Tration thing, uh, the tower vent comes in and then it disappears and then reappears and once, like, it, it does that twice and the, the second time it disappears, that's when propellant load starts on the ship. But for the OLM, the, the vent starts and when it stops, it goes. That, that is already propellant load has started. So this OLM vent usually lasts between 45 minutes to an hour. I believe last time it took a little bit longer, but today they are going a little bit fast. So I wouldn't be surprised if it actually went the, the lower end. Uh, that's why I was saying that it may even be well before uh, 11 a.m. So yeah, it could be 10.30, 10.45 a.m. Alex. For the penal load. Alex. Mm -hmm. When do you think Starship will launch? Okay, that that kind of prediction I cannot get. <laughs> have a guess. Have a guess. Somewhere in March. <laughs> Somewhere in. All right, I'm gonna give a date. I don't care. Uh, Adrian, when do you think Starship will launch? I will go this as I tend to do very statistically, and if I go from about the like, if I look at the wet rest rehearsal timing for the second flight, and look at the flight date for the second flight, like that's the that's that's how I would approach this, right? Because that's the only data point we have here. Uh, the wet rest rehearsal number one uh, was on October twenty fourth for the for the first for the second flight, and it flew twenty four days later. So 
going from there, we would be three weeks and three days away, right? And so it would be around the 11th of March. And based on everything we know, based on the whole Elon three weeks tweet and everything, I, I think that's quite a realistic target. Also, it's a m Monday, which always helps uh, for making it a bit of a more predict like reasonable prediction. So I'm going to say 11th of March for the first attempt. I'm going to say March the 12th, and I'm going to say I'm also broken because I think that might be a world record super chat ever on any of our, any of our streams ever. Wilbur. Mm. Wilbur Tiberius Baggins. £480 wow. super chat. Now, <laughs> That breaks the five hundred dollar limit somehow, because I think yeah. five hundred dollars was the, the maximum I've ever seen, and that breaks it because it's pound sterling. That is crazy, That's... Wilbur. Um, Wilbur, you need to get in touch with me via DM, PM, Pony Express, whatever. I'm going to make sure you get an L2 lifetime because you've just spent <laughs> far more than you've, you've earned about four of them. So please get in touch with me privately. I'll try myself. I'll try and find you. And I'll, I'll give you a little bit more than this because it deserves more than just reading out on chat. This is I don't think I've ever seen anything like that before. Um, I've often thought how much it would make a difference to get my UK state pension this June. Want to say, want a job, no salary, baggins. <laughs> that, well, that's, that's crazy. That I'm, Honestly, that, I didn't think that was possible for a start. I thought maybe it would limit the currency exchange to the limit of the $500, but obviously you found a way around it. Um, so that's going on there, but Wilbur, get in touch with me, and I'll do some extra things for you. You'll get some extra things for that, because that is crazy. That's almost too much. Can I say that? Yeah, I can say that's, that. That is too much. It, yeah. Crazy. I'm speechless. I'm literally like, wow. <laughs> Yeah, uh, back to <laughs> questions. Yeah. You know when Jack gets broken because he sees supers coming in, I, I'm like, my Yorkshire accent doesn't sound like it, but I think you definitely did break me there. So that, that's amazing. Thank you. Uh, Zach became a red team member. By the way, it, that, that is amazing, but everybody is absolutely helping because it doesn't matter if you do a membership or not, even mm -hmm. just in and like in a video. It all counts. I would hate for YouTube in general especially not us, we wouldn't do it, but YouTube in general to turn into a kind of like tier system. Like I'll ask, I'll ask, I'll, I've got questions in the queue here, ready to be asked during this stream, which has just come from random people. No super chats or anything like that. I will always do that. And we'll always make sure that everyone's appreciated because it is a numbers game. There's six and a half thousand people in here right now. I'd rather have six and a half thousand people than just a member only stream with like 500 people in it because it just, it wouldn't be right. So that's, I always want to get it across. If you're like a, a, a non-member in chat who subscribed and just talking in chat, you're just as valued. And it is so important to understand that I mean that because it's easy to say it, but I do mean it. Right, moving on. Zach has become a Red Sea member. It's, it sounds disingenuous when I start reading out people who are supporters, but you know what I mean? It, I really do mean that. Um, somewhat off topic. How many launches a year did the FAA say Starship could make from Starbase? I forget. That's from TechRun. That is five, isn't it, Alex? Um, can you repeat it, please? How I many? Was actually it's typing a, a. Oh well, we'll go to Adrian it's, first. Adrian, because I know you know the answer as well. Yes, it's five. Yeah, it's five. It? They can modify that if needs be. Yeah, so it, it, there's several limitations. Why? It's like the main situation right now is the programmatic environmental assessment uh, says they can fly up to five. Uh, so they would need at least another modification of this programmatic environmental assessment. So what does that mean? Um, we, th we don't know exactly. We don't know what kind of regulatory burden they have to do because it, the, right now the mitigations they have to do, because we talked about this way earlier in uh, like very, very a few months ago, um, about all of these mitigations they have to do to get Starship launching in this natural habitat. Of course, if you launch more, you damage the natural habitat more. So that means there's potential more mitigations, there's more damage. So there has to be, if they increase that, a whole nother investigation probably into what kind of implications this has on the wildlife. So um, I, I, I would be very surprised if they start this um like if they go above five this year because i i feel like this might be another at least a partial environmental assessment 
Um, because they, what they don't want to trigger is this ICE, this environmental impact statement. That's the one thing they are always be careful of because if once they trigger that, that takes like a few years to complete. So you really want to like kind of go around that and just modify as you go instead of rolling everything out all at once. But yeah, in theory, they could go more than five. They just need this modification of the environmental assessment. I do wonder, I though, if uh, they are already going for 10, for example. Because I believe uh, for... <laughs> I, I be <laughs> um, I'm seeing a lot of that venting and um, I'm starting to, to see where, where it's coming from. But I believe uh, for the deluge system for, for Flight 2, the documentation said that they're looking at 10 uses per year, uh, no, not 10 uses, excuse me, 30 uses per year, and that each launch will need at least three of those uses. So basically 10 launches per year and using three times per launch the water deluge system. The idea will be that they will have some kind of pre-launch testing like today, for example. And the other day on Wednesday, we saw a test of the water deluge system. We'll have to see whether they do it again today. Uh, that's something that we'll have to find out, I guess. And, and and then, obviously, if they do a static fire test like they did with Booster 10 uh, in, in December, then that, that also counted as a as a use of that water deluge system. And then, obviously, during the launch. So at least two or three times per launch campaign, that's what they expected. And they said 10 launch campaigns per year. So I wonder if they are sort of expecting that to change already this year. It's it's an interesting thing to, to think about. Caitlin Lindsay, after they ramp up cadence, what changes might they make to the tank farm to make this process faster? Or could they keep the tanks chilled continuously? Good question, Caitlin. Thank you for your support. Alex? It's definitely faster. Uh, we're expecting the, the propeller load to take about a third of, uh, no, uh, excuse me, about a third shorter, so that will be two thirds of the previous one. So instead of 90 minutes, 60 minutes. That's what we're sort of expecting today. We'll see. That's the, the magic of a wet dress. Brian Green chooses the supporters by making a rallying call. Over 5k watch and not even 1,000 likes. Hit the like button. <laughs> go Rocket Nerds. Hit the like button. Go NSF. Go Starship. That's what he wrote. It's not me. It sounds like it's me talking there, doesn't it? It's not. That is literally what Brian has said there. Thank you very much for your support and rallying call. In fact, let me just... The way likes work, it's actually free just to hit a like. It, it really is like a few seconds of your day. And it does help the YouTube algorithm overlords wherever they may live at Google. <laughs> Mr. Two Wolf. seconds? Well, maybe even a... Well, you, you talk about maybe me. Because I'm like, where's my mouse? Move it over. Click the plus thing. Go back. Yes, that may be me. Most people could do it in about a second. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Mr. One Wolfie <laughs> has gifted five team memberships. Thank you for your support. Uh, Moldy Space Industries for the whiplash jerk. And hopefully for the uh, Frosty Stack, the whiplash joke is the pearl. I'm going to close this pearl because I'm disappointed. Dearie me. The pearl was ship 26. I love it. Big fan. 74%. Not quite my temper. Name the movie, which is whiplash. Uh, 25%. I'm Wait. seeing this. They, that can't be right. You can't all be... Out of 2,500 votes, 74% can't be big fans of Ship 26. Surely not. I, th I... I mean, I have seen other polls on this channel so far that I... that I, I, I called deeply rigged. So... Deeply rigged. That's a bit dramatic for a, a YouTube <laughs> chat poll. <laughs> I mean, there were some polls about, like, the amazing Ship 26 and oh. the not-so-great Ship 28. That wording kind of influenced the poll, I felt. Yeah, but that one was oh. all right. And look at this. Look at chat right now. It's suddenly become a Ship, ship 26. So if we put a metal print of Ship 26 in the store, would you all buy it? Nah, I bet they wouldn't. They'd be like, I'm really joking about it in chat. I didn't mean it. I don't really like it. <laughs> <laughs> and we already have a metal print of Ship 26. We might have, you know. Uh, we have. I, yeah, oh, I think we, we actually have even two. One of the Mac Diamonds, right? And one from Sean, I think it is. That did a <laughs> yeah. cool artsy picture of 
of the ship. So yeah. Well, even Kevin Michael Reed's hacked into my account to post we have a ship me ship twenty six metal print. <laughs> not, uh, not fair. Not fair. Pe pe people I'm discovering sure my favorite Twitch streamer based on the wording I just used there. But great. Um. <laughs> I'm sure Adrian is finding a link to that print, and uh, uh, if we sell I one, already... I will, I will, I will stand in correct. I will sit corrected because <laughs> I think there's a little bit of cheekiness going on there with the, the even... sudden, the sudden love for Ship Twenty Six. We even have two. I will link both. We have one with the static fire, and one with uh, with the sunset. So there you go. Both linked in chat. There we go. Very good. <laughs> Brian Green, as, um, after that question, after the point, in fact, actually gifted fire team memberships. Thank you very much. As did John Dopnicker. I get these are people I recognise every single time, every single stream. It, I find that really personally stunning because once, even you know, even no times is expected, but once is like wow, thank you. To keep doing it is a huge support because it, uh, it's really encouraging that you like what we do but also it allows us to go out and buy more things to help you get more views to these streams look at these advanced, uh, enhanced we, cameras we've got they did we don't don't fall off trees they don't go off the back of a lorry we have to buy them and then put all the equipment with them so it, that helps us do those things so it really is appreciated we have a few updates here uh okay. first off the uh the sheriff has completely departed the village now which is good because uh they they kind of move away now that the uh, tank loading gets closer because, again, they don't want to be there if that thing gets tanked about 5,000 tons. Uh, so that's good. That's a good sign. Like, usually an empty roadblock would be bad, right? No, they're still there. They're just at the roadblock that is further down where they are still raiding and they still have the road closed. It's just that the whole village has been evacuated at the uh, well there's the new roadblock here that's the current roadblock so they are even further away right now that's the first update and the second is we see frost all over the place we see frost on the on the subcoolers we see frost on basically everything we want to see here and alex except and the rocket. Correct me if, in, <laughs> except the rocket that except uh, expe uh, uh, correct me if i'm wrong here but like everything we are seeing right now for example that frost here Everything looks about what we would expect for propellant load in like 30 minutes or so? Yeah, hopefully with between 30 to 45 minutes it, it should be coming up soon. But definitely, it, based on previous on previous propellant loads, uh, it does work with the old setups, so it could even be faster that they prepare this. So it, it, it could very well be well before 11 a.m. That's what we're expecting. That works for me. Nick actually... You see a little bit more frost there. Look at that. Nick actually got something from the store. When you buy something from the store, you get the option to put a message in there as well, which you'll read out on stream while we're on stream. So Nick has done that. And a, a really cool thing as well, they're saying, keep up the amazing work, NSF. Grabbing some birthday goodies for a friend who is a long-time NSF fan and watches SBL every day. Please could you wish Ollie a belated happy birthday. Best wishes from the UK. Happy birthday, Ollie. Everyone's gone, happy Adrian. Happy birthday. Alex. Alex. Happy birthday. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's all right. yeah. yeah, that's great. Thank you. And uh, I hope he appreciates what he gets because our store's amazing. So he'll, he'll, I'm sure he'll be very happy with the belated birthday gifts there. John Dopner's back again. Wow. I'm going to say launch date May 18th, March 18th, the day I start my new job. Oh, congratulations on your new job, John. Did I give my guess? I can't remember if I gave my guess. I'm yes, going you gave. Oh, there we go. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that they're going to have this vehicle at readiness. The wet dress rehearsal is a massive step towards that. There will be more D stacks to come. We know that. We expect that. But the way this path, this processing flows, we used to call it during the space shuttle days, is going. I do believe they'll be ready by the time the FAA come back and approve. The key for me is the FAA saying if they'll approve this flight or if they'll in confidence approve several flights pending no anomalies on ift3 ift4 etc that's what my hope is i'm hoping the faa will be at a stance where they'll say provided everything goes well you're good to launch x amount of missions that then will and be game on because they've got the vehicles for it yeah and also that's a thing that a lot of people confuse i think sometimes because there's two things that need to happen before a flight it can happen on a regulatory side one they need to uh close the mishap investigation 
and two, they need to modify the launch license. These are two separate processes from each other. What they are trying, based on what we think right now, is maybe skip the second step for a lot of like upcoming flights. That would still mean, if they have a mishap, and we have talked about the definition of a mishap plenty already, um, they would still need to perform a mishap investigation. However, I, I still think SpaceX would always perform a mishap investigation anyway. Because if something goes wrong, you kind of want to want to know what goes wrong, right? If you don't reach Hawaii, something went wrong. So what went wrong? What can you implement? How can you do better, right? So uh, absolutely. And I believe um, I believe at one point recently, uh, Cath leaders said that they are working on the licenses for Flight Three and Flight Four. So it wouldn't be surprising if when they release the launch the modified launch license it says flight three and flight four that could be a thing as well i think michael reed in the background is mentioning tower vents i think we've referenced yeah. it already but what's the status of the tower vent right now are we oh, waiting for because it, to it stopped stop? yes yeah that is that is the first stop so then in a few minutes it'll come back again and now it's going to be its own waterfall mode can we talk about the waterfall mode? Because I always love it when, it when we talk about it. So we the can't. Olam vent has this sort of mode. So the, the, the Olam vent is st it starts and then it ramps up slowly, slowly. And towards the end, it becomes this huge vent. But the tower vent, we saw it venting before. Then it goes out, as I mentioned, right? And then it comes back. But when it comes back, it's it starts growing very, very fast. And it becomes like a really huge plume right behind the tower. And it's always so cool to see that. It's a, it's a great sight. And it's a bit, it's a bit of a pity that today we, we have fog because otherwise the, you know, the, the long range cameras are, are not going to be working as well, but it's always a cool sight to see. So yeah, once it comes back, it should be amazing to see. Yeah, uh, there's, okay. Well, kind of, yeah, you, you can see some of it. <laughs> Very good. Lots of questions which cover a lot of base, so I'm going to speed run through some of these. Steve asks, Steve McCravey asks, is the FTS armed yet? Uh, no, it's not. That's one of the last things they do. You'll see the boom box or one of our enhanced cameras where they keep the FTS stored. I believe it might be visible on June, depends on the fog. I'm not entirely sure, but that's where they keep the FTS. And that's the last thing they do. That's an obvious thing where they're not going to have an armed vehicle on <laughs> the pad days and weeks before launch so they'll leave it last thing that's actually one of the last d stacks we'll see as well with the ship um uh, thank you for your question steve um shell asked the 20th closure still happening seeing a closure today um i think that's a back there's a boom box as we call it that's where <laughs> they keep the explosives for the fts um near the pad but it's actually very much secured it's got even got its own little air conditioning unit on it you can see there on the side in focus camera focus it's seeing twigs it's seen twigs first. It's going, no, do you want to look at the twigs? Yes, no. There we go. But there's a boom box. Um, James asks, oh, sorry, I, didn't, I even answered the question about the 20th. The 20th is probably more of a backup, isn't it, to this date, rather than actually being another test, would you say? Adrian? Or Alex? Yeah, it's very likely to be a, a, a backup to today, because... They they when they filed for the for the closures for the set of closures it was actually 15, 16, and twentieth, so that that's probably like the backup of the backup. <laughs> that works for me. James Atkinson says, "Can we have a UK meetup pub meetup?" We did have one. Um, it was like a preliminary one, so don't feel left out. We were just basically Chris W in our Discord, one of our mods organised it. Just said, "Well, you know, there's a date and we could turn up in Dirty Leeds <laughs> in West Yorkshire." Um, we thought, all right, maybe three or four of us will turn up, have a little chat, you know, and we'll plan a proper meeting. About 20 people turned up, if not more, actually. Uh, just it out of the so blue. Cool. Yeah, Adrian turned up as well. And that was great. And a great bunch of people. And the idea is we'll do a proper UK meetup at the Leicester Space Museum probably in April time. I will announce it, James. So I'll make sure <laughs> Ward is shouting lead songs at me. Oh, dearie me. Um, we'll make sure we announce it to a wider community, like in our chat, not just in the Discord. Yes. And then we'll make sure that everyone's aware of the date and the location, the planning of it, because I think that'd be a real great event. And based on just the Dirty Leads meetup, that's going to be quite amazing that we'll probably have quite a lot of people because they came out of the blue. 
with a Leeds one. I did not expect to be walking to Leeds Station and seeing that many people. There was a lot yeah, more than I thought there would be. <laughs> It was kind of crazy for Chris and me because I think we both expected like about five people and we were just hanging out in a like I don't know a pub with five people or so, and then we we kind of came around and it was like twenty twenty five people and we were just standing there like whoa, <laughs> that was yeah. really impressive and uh, shout outs to everybody there everybody was so positive so so nice to interact with such great people to have a conversation with that was like the really the best thing about it like it was just uh, such a fun fun time absolutely agree ninja asks would spacex use starlink simulator to test a pest dispenser while in orbit instead of risking a real satellite like the same dimensions of weight so we're talking about a mass simulator starlink in the pest dispenser i don't think we're going to see that on um this flight for a start but maybe on a future flight what do you think alex um, yeah, a, a simulator could be, could probably be launched, especially now that they're doing still the suborbital uh, trajectory thingy. Um, the problem is when they launch a real satellite, they need uh, authorization from the FCC, from the Federal Communications Commission, to be able to operate it. So it's not something that they, they have to take lightly. They actually need a permit to be able to operate that satellite in orbit. And so far, we haven't seen that. Um... And so it's 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 probably going to be coming soon, but we'll, we'll see. Even Elon has said that they don't expect Starship to launch actual Starlink satellites until later this year, and that's probably Elon time. So I will say that's probably a 2025 thing. Absolutely. And by the way, the UK meetup, that was just in reference to the UK meetup, we will be having, and we do actually do, uh, lots of Space Coast meetups. We'll have a Starbase meetup. We'll have lots of meetups planned. Uh, so that was just relevant to the UK side. But um, I think um, our Rusties, where our fleet cam is based, is a very popular meetup place when there's a, a number of NSF people on the Space Coast for a launch. It's a nice to have a, a cool meal before going to see the rocket launch, which I want to do myself. So I will be at one of those in the near future, hoping. Well, Jim Latz. When you hear the vent is early and run over to your tablet wide-eyed really, thanks NSF team for nurturing the nerd within. <laughs> so when Alex shouts, ooh, 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 I, I can imagine a bunch of people going, <laughs> what, 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 and running over to their screen to see what Alex is excited about because it might be relevant to venting and this propellant load that's coming up soon. So yes, I completely agree with that. Angry American, uh, thank you for your support, by the way. 6.2k watching, there's now 7.2, 1.2k likes, smash the like and kick the algorithm monster and shed love for NSF. Thank you very much, Angry American. Uh, Jax asks, what's the difference between the DSS and FireX? Alex? Ah, uh, yeah, so uh, it's it's because of the differences. So when he talks about the DSS is the detonation suppression system. So basically it's the system that they have in place to avoid uh the basically what we saw with booster 7 that they had the sort of little explosion underneath of the of the olm that's the actual thing that fires up when we see that sort of misty water coming out from the from the bottom and the fire x system is a whole completely different system that uh, you know if if there were to be a fire on on the olm on on the launch ring it will activate and will try to mitigate that fire and try to put it away it's a different system, and the thing is, they have similar connections, I believe. And at the beginning, a lot of people were confused because there were like labels saying at the same time, uh, detonation suppression system and fire X. And so it's like there were the same thing with with two different labels for two different systems. And so that is sort of the case. I still call it the Fire X, to be fair, just like people call it the thrust bug to the aft cap on the booster. It's technically the aft cap, not the thrust bug. And uh, I believe there were, like, IFT is not even a thing officially. It's a Starship flight test. Like, people do that all the time. It's just for, for convenience. Everyone talks about it that, that way, so everyone just, just says it that way. So, yeah, that's the difference, that the Fire X is the thing that actually removes the whole... Mm, fire uh, suppression basically and then the the, the the detonation suppression system is the one that we see with the misty water coming out before the engines ignite not the water deluge but the one above 
underneath of the long tree. So, yeah. And just to give you a quick scatters update here where we are, we are in a wet, what we expect to be a full wet rest rehearsal of the third Starship flight stack. Uh, the tank farm is already spooled up. We already see the lines to the ship and the booster being chilled down in preparation for propellant loading. And right now, we do expect propellant loading to commence in, well, 20, 30 minutes from now, somewhere in that range. But we might not be f that far away from propellant loading here anymore. I'm reading out questions from chat, but also I've got to thank the support again, which is again crazy and... It's always crazy, and I can't get it across enough because of my accents and mannerisms. I just don't, I just don't sound like a jack. Where it really shows our appreciation, but trust me, we appreciate it so much. We're getting so much of it as well every single time. I'm always going to read out the names because it's very important to recognise these people. Uh, Michael became a Red Team member. Thank you very much, Michael. I'm going to try and speed run some of these. Tim Moore became a pad rep member. So you'll have access because yeah, all member levels get access to the multi-screen. Thank you so much. Apocalypse Cow, Danger Moo, as I call him, has gifted five Red Team memberships. Moldy Space Industries has gifted five Red Team memberships. This is where my voice goes. Rev Head gifted, gifted five Red Team memberships. I told you. We've got uh, Ang15, who became a pad rep member. Methane Man, or Methane Man, depends where you come from, gifted five Red Team memberships. Charles, googly, just did a $50 super chat with no message. <laughs> just, here's 50 bucks. Where in life does someone just hand you 50 bucks? That is crazy. Thank you so much for your amazing support. Tired of the store message. Plan on putting these on a jacket and make a SpaceX jacket with these Dragon patches and Axiom patches if they're available for purchase. Right, our patches, obviously, are, we design our own patches, and that's why we can sell them. But I believe you can go to a SpaceX store and buy um, actual official SpaceX merch on things like Dragon. So I think that would be your ultimate goal for that jacket plan you have, which sounds very cool, by the way. Well done. Um, Joe Dog McKeel says, My bet for Elon's l target launch date is March 10, 2024. That is the 69th day of the year. Yes, a very Elon thing that would be. Uh, Jack Sullivan, shout out to my wife, who I love for watching with me. Oh, that's amazing. Jax, I'm wife. Hello. Sorry it took a while to get to your thing there because we've got such a massive queue of questions here. But yeah, if you're still listening, which I'm sure you are because we've not got to the business end of this yet. Um, that is so cool. You've obviously got a very nice wife there. Watched Rockets with you. Uh, Josh Zero. Food for thought, Starship launches has a fireworks shoot-off as it ascends. That's very Elon as well, isn't it? Remember the <laughs> first, before the first launch, they had the laser show on the, uh, I think it was a Mega Bay, the first Mega Bay, because they build so many production site buildings there, you can't keep up. But they had um, a laser show, and the laser show guy actually saw us live streaming what he was showing, and he put the NSF logo on the Mega Bay, which I thought was so cool. And he was in chat saying, watch this, watch this. That was an amazing pre-IFT1 event. Uh, Tyler, thank you for your support. Again, you've actually got more things from the start. I never read out the same question. Uh, contribution for Lens Windshield Wiper Fund. Floor perspective. Yes, thank you. We have got lots of um, tricks we do, but sometimes it's just such weather conditions down there. It's not like in the brochure, is it? I say that to uh, Julia and Max about the Florida weather sometimes. That's not how they do Florida TV adverts over here for the tourism adverts on TV. It's blue skies all the time. What's all this rainy conditions and storms? And they say, that's Florida. So I'm not surprised there. Uh, Anonymous, which is a way of not putting your name, but doing a storm message. So thank you for your support. You didn't even want your name out. You put, thanks so much for all these great reporting over the years. Well, thank you so much because that's important to me. We started as a new site, 2005 is when I started it, just as a new site with a forum. And we didn't get to a YouTube channel until about four years ago. And that was thanks to Mary, who was on our forum, posting her amazing photographs and clips into our forum. And they were so popular because they're amazing, and it's still amazing, as you know, that people were downloading, 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 hotlinking, hotlinking, and our service couldn't cope. So we asked Mary, can we put these clips on YouTube instead so that YouTube hosts them? And that way we don't break our forum. And that's how the YouTube channel started. It was a relief valve for the forum. Not some, we've got some master plan about a YouTube channel here. Never was that. <laughs> and then four years later, we're at 926,000 subscribers. 
that is not, uh, absolutely a bonkers to me. I can only thank the amazing team we've got involved with NSF for making it happen because trust me, I am just the guy who started to say it's you've got to if you if you're anyone like me, you want to start something, make sure you surround yourself by with clever people. Because that's the way it'll work. And that's the only reason why I can say this is working is because we are, we've got an amazing team behind everything we do. <laughs> so many messages here. I'm just going to go through as many as I can. Jeff wrote another regular. Every, he's got his own chatbot command. Is that regular? Jeff, thank you for gifting Red Team membership. Uh, Roddy's become a Red Team member. Thank you very much. Jamie has upgraded to a launch director level, which is massive. Matthew has a star message and put Moo. <laughs> Moo to you, you Matthew. Too. Yes. Matthew thought, oh, I get a chance to actually put a message in with my purchase. I know what I'll do. I'll put Moo. Oh, winky SS face. Merch. Hello, oh, there we McGregor. go. What's going on? <laughs> There's been already three Raptor test fires today. <laughs> McGregor Live, trust me, it's the world's most active rocket engine test site in the world. And McGregor Live. It shows in the left-hand side the tests they've had during the day. If you go on McGregor Live later in the day, you'll see like six tests have happened already. So always pop in and just check in because the chances are when you pop in, there's going to be an engine firing up. Just the way it works there. It's an amazing place. And also, if you're a bit weird like me and you like herd dynamics, because I like horses, uh, watch the cows in the middle. The middle screen, the cows, the herd dynamics are amazing. How many like, cows? About 100 cows there, yeah. There's several little groups with one big herd. And you'll see them moving across. And they're all planned. It's all very synchronized, as her dynamics is. We've <laughs> got full screen cows. <laughs> I didn't expect that. Well, there's a tripod stand in the background. The, the fun thing about the McGregor cows is they used to stampede during testing because they were scared of the engines. Now it's all been bred out of them. The calves have grown up around the mothers, not panicking about engine testing. It's been bred out of them. So that's how it all works. And they just don't care now. You can see a raptor firing. And these cows there, that raptor could fire up on that tripod stand right now. And those cows would not move. They would not stop grazing. They'd be like, oh, another engine test. I'm used to it now. Very cool. Wilbur, who did that massive, incredible, massive super chat earlier, has become a flight engineer, which is our highest level of membership. Wilbur... I, please I, I, remind me I'm going to find him if he doesn't get in contact with me I will find him because I've got to do more than just thanking him on stream I've got to give him some other things like L2 Lifetime or whatever so Wilbur I will be in touch today at some point we will find you we will find you I sound like um, him out of Taken <laughs> what's his name Liam Nielsen <laughs> I yeah. will find you <laughs> not that watched amazing support of have course. you watched that movie Adrian yeah no never oh, heard of it you should do it's great it really is. The second and third films, less so. The first one, good. Two and three, nah. <laughs> uh, anonymous, a storm message, go Starship, praying for a success in IFT3, go team, thanks NSF. Well, thank you again. We couldn't do this without the support we get from you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, more questions, by the way. I'd, I'd like to revert through thanks and just questions in chat. Any idea why yesterday's attempt was what it was. Now, Alan's talking about the first wet dress rehearsal mm. that aborted, so can we talk about what we think was the reason uh, they aborted that wet dress rehearsal? Adrian, you go first. Yeah, so, uh, of course, all of this is speculation. We, we didn't get an update from SpaceX. Um, however, they started, uh, they stopped the testing uh, very rapidly after beginning propellant loading, so I mean, the most likely answer is they found some minor anomaly, something they want to look at, something that didn't look right, right at the beginning of propellant loading, uh, probably related to exactly that process where they were cautious. Again, remember this tank farm was heavily modified, so it has to. There, there, there's about to have like there, there's bound to be some quirks here that they have to find out and they have to fix. So maybe they found something out during this process of propellant loading that the tank farm didn't like, and they then rapidly spooled down, so it looked like they um, they really didn't want to go ahead from that. So, uh, yeah, I would I would suspect the tank farm didn't like some related things due to propellant loading, and that's why they aborted. Uh, of course, not nothing specific here. I cannot tell you which exact valve probably was the cause here, so... 
I see a message yeah. here. It just says, at Adrian, winky face and smiley face. The name is Grassvent. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> the person has, called, has taken the username Grassvent. They are, they are here for about a year now, I think. Um, and they're like, they're like coming in the chat from time to time, super chatting and remembering they're still there. Um, I, I see you, Grassman. I see you all the time. My word. <laughs> uh, Paul says your reg uh, registration for these events is so nice. Love the people. People. That's nice. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> I'm not used to. Pra I don't like praise. I'm not very good at taking praise. So. Well, thank you for your support, though. It's very much appreciated. I'll, I'll class that as praise for the team rather than anything that you're particularly hearing right now. Uh, and uh, can't wait to see Starship and New Glenn stacked together. Right? Okay. I, bu I built both. Jeremiah. Now, I assume you mean you built models of them rather than you've worked for both SpaceX and Blue Origin. But that brings us on to a nice little segue about New Glenn, because we're talking about big rockets. New Glenn, so many people keep thinking it's like a Falcon 9. It's not. No. It's much bigger. It's almost the height of a Saturn V. Adrian, I know you like New Glenn, so maybe you want to talk yes. a little bit about the milestones we've seen recently. Yeah, they are They are really starting to uh, improve like get faster and faster there over at uh lc36 um i mean we have seen the uh, simulator on the pad now i want to point out that's the simulator uh the simulator is just a structural and a mass simulator to basically get to handle an object just like a new glenn first stage and the operators can learn with that they can do fit checks with that it doesn't feature actual tankage however in the hangar as we have talked about a lot in the hangar, there is a kind of like Pathfinder vehicle that features tankage, that features a second stage, that features a first stage. And we know that there is at least a decent confidence that they might launch uh, this year uh, with with a mission to, to Mars, actually. Uh, so so it's it, New Glenn is really coming. New Glenn is coming together. And I think it's a thing that a lot of journalists and a lot of people always have said like once it happens it will happen quite fast and i feel like that was always the feeling about blue origin like at some point they will just roll out parts of new glenn and be like oh wow and that's exactly what we see now so i think there's a reasonable chance we will see a new glenn fly this year uh and maybe more next year and that would be cool like it's a it's a fucking heavy class rocket it's going for reusability from the start, or, or, or like very close to the start. It's a, it's quite quite a beast. Very good. By the way, while we've got oh. one, Adrian, uh, uh, hang on, Alex, with an update. Alex, update. Uh, Breaking news. Yeah, I'm seeing one of the the methane subcooler that is dedicated for the ship is venting heavily, which oftentimes that kind of venting. Maybe if we go to beach. There we go. There you can see that, and uh, boy, it is venting very heavily. Usually, this kind of activity indicates that they're starting to load methane, which will indicate it is methane load on the ship. Remember, from the wet dress rehearsal attempt on Wednesday, they started first with the ship and then with the booster. So it's not surprising that they have started with perhaps this is just uh, an early indication that they have a started methane load on the ship right now. So that that is one. So they have four subcoolers. Three of them are dedicated for the booster methane side. And the other one, the fourth one, is dedicated to the ship. And now we're seeing that tower vent coming back. So that is our indication that they are preparing for the liquid oxygen load on Starship. So that is a really great indication that, the, that we are most likely already into propellant load that first thing being uh being loaded that is methane on the on the ship right, so the first th uh, sorry chris just to add to that we will not see a frostering right away because they need to fill the down cover in or like the like the transfer tube in in the ship all the way and then the 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 common ball cat and then we will see a frost line so that will take some time uh but we will see frost very soon on these vehicles go ahead chris I was going to say, uh, not only do we have Alex out, we need an Alex buzzer. So when we see propellant load, and Alex presses the button, he goes, arr, 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 something like that, so that we know to stop and look at what we're looking at. I actually at. have There's... a drawing, if Kevin wants to show it. <laughs> yes, actually, that'd be fine. 
I should be sending it. I feel like the moment where somebody at NSF decided we want to give Alex go. the ability to draw, that was a good <laughs> one. How how neat is Alex's writing now? If if that was me, yeah. if that was Chris Art, it'd be like a three-year-old scribbled on the screen. I cannot write like this even on a non-digital digital <laughs> version. It's true, it's same, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it, it looks like a toddler when I write. It does. Really. <laughs> oh, I spent too many times on the keyboard these days. I just can't write. You know, when you have to write on like a, a document for like, oh, yeah. you know, relevant to your own own life and stuff. You you write it. You look. Who's the three year old writing on this paper? <laughs> yeah, it's me. Yo, oh, dear. It's uh, it's like birthday cards when somebody asks you like, "Can you write on this birthday card?" And you're like having a pencil in your hand for the first time in like eight months, and you're like, "Uh, how to use this device?" <laughs> yes. Which end? Oh yes, that end, the pointy end, pointy end down in this case, there we go. Uh, vanishing image, uh, thank you for your support, unable to gift membership right now, so here's some help for the channel that I love so much. Wow, I mean, you read that and you just, that's what motivates you during these very long hours at NSF, it really is long hours. Look at that, Alex. Hang on, because I'm... Oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, that is the, the CO2 tanks venting uh, inside of the chines. That is yep. a good sign as well that they are... So this is a, a, a thing that maybe the general public is not aware of, that, sure, super heavy in Starship use uh, methane and liquid oxygen as their propellants, but sometimes when you have a lot of fire stuff on your... On your uh, aft end of your rocket, sometimes fires can occur, and so they use CO2, carbon dioxide, to, to try to avoid those. And so they have that fire suppression system, and that is what we're seeing right now. They're loading the CO2 on those tanks. They are facing, there are two tanks, one each on one of the chines uh, facing the, the tower, so that's why we're sort of, the booster is sort of in the way there. But you can see that venting coming out from, from that chine, and definitely cool when it happens. I'm seeing also the the tower vent, and he's look look at that. Yeah. I always say that, but 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 it's so cool now. It's Even with a fog, I mean, it's, it's quite cool. Yes, that's uh, that's the thing. Literally, here. yeah, I know. <laughs> we are funny here. Um, it's even nicer with the big U.S. flag that's on the po look at that time in there. That's wonderful. The big U.S. flag that's uh, displayed on the tower. I believe that is for President's Day, which is a big holiday in America on Monday. I didn't know that, by the way, that there was a holiday on Monday. That's interesting. Well, there's no such thing as a holiday in NSF because we're always working, but it is an official American holiday on Monday. President's Day. There we go. Is there a launch on Monday? No, there's not. Wait, there is. In Vandenberg. Well, which, which kinda, launch is that? Sorta. Yeah, it's uh, uh, St Starlink 7 15. Yeah, we'll see about that. <laughs> uh -oh. It's a bit tight to to get it to to get it done. We'll see. If not, we can we can blame some other people. <laughs> nice. But we should get very close here to a frost ring, right? Like I also see the like we we should be mm -hmm. relatively close. I'm trying to look for the oil event, but everything is foggy. So right now it's super complicated <laughs> to look for it. Yeah, like, we don't know if the booster prop loading has begun because we cannot see the all event because the methane subcooler event is in front well, of it. You know, now that they have dedicated subcoolers for the for the booster, if they start venting, that'll be our cue. Because at least we'll True. know that they haven't loaded, that they haven't started loading methane on the booster. But that loss is, is a bit thing. hard. Yeah, liquid oxygen will be, will be a bit harder. Even... Even the frost will be harder to look for because it's at the bottom and that's where all of the fog is located. Like you, you will not be able to see it until it actually see. see? Look. Thanks. <laughs> it, it's more like don't see because <laughs> we cannot see it. But yeah, welcome spotty. to abandoned, abandoned base, I guess. Sp spot a spotty tower vent. Then, well, you can't see the tower vent. You can just see, not see the pad vent. Oh, maybe we can see the tower vent here, and uh, the pad vent here? Nope, we can't. Also fucked out. <laughs> it's, a, it's a funny game. I think I can see the... I, I don't know, on, on 11, uh, I see the OLM vent. But there's also a lot of fog. 
There we go, look at that. It's all, it, it looks like it is on waterfall mode. You can see right yep. behind it. But there's fencing from everywhere. <laughs> so I can understand. Right, Adrian, a uh, question I had about 15 minutes ago for you. Ray asks, are you planning to bring this back for Hot Stage Designer stickers? It's the brooch and the um, subject of stickers. I don't think we're doing stickers, are we, for this one? Uh, let me... Let, so, regarding stickers, uh, there's some challenges we have regarding them, regarding some logistics and chain uh, things. That's why we don't have a sticker for this one uh, so far. We, we are aware. We, we saw your feedback. We, we are aware of that. Uh, it will not be a matter that we will resolve in, in days. Um, it will probably take a bit longer, but we are aware that you want stickers back and we are working our best to bring them back. Um, but I cannot give you like a, oh, they will be back in, in a week or so. Uh, it's, it's, it, it's a complicated situation and uh, we'll get there. Does that, is that, is that a good answer? Yes, it is. Uh, Rick has Perfect. done a, a massive $100 ch a tip with a tongue twister, I do believe. Methane man oh, no. cameras have Methane man, cam ca methane man cameras have cameras, their cameras everywhere. Thank you, Rick. Very much appreciate your support and trying to catch my um, mouth out, which you did successfully. Um, Brian Green, all hail Mary, queen of Boca Chica. Agreed. Well said. Thank you, Brian. I hope Mary's listening and appreciates that because every time I mention Mary, do it now. Do it now, chat. Do Mary's command. All praise Mary because Mary is the reason we're doing this, literally. There's no two ways about that. That's not, oh, be nice. No, it's true. This is the reason we've got this live stream right now. It all goes back to Mary. And here goes chat. There we go. Chat's going crazy every time. Very much appreciated. And I'm sure Mary appreciates it as well. Uh, Matthew Dowell has gifted five red to memberships. Tyler and Mark has become a pad rep member. Uh, Austin sent a tip. Love the content of the channel. You are also awesome for providing much content to us all. Also, congrats on the 126,000 subscribers. That still catches me out as well. That's gone up quite a lot recently with Starship back on the pad. Uh, what's Adrian's favorite squirrel? Would also oh love God. Jack in a kayak in a kilt. Oh my goodness. <laughs> There's some demands there. Uh, Adrian, can you explain the squirrel thing first of all? It's a word that Germans can say. Oh, uh, and say it. Please say it. What's the word again? Squirrel. Squirrel. Quite a squirrel. It, it, it hurts. It hurts. It's really. I don't know why. Why? Like it. It conflicts with us. I guess. Uh, it's just the word we like. You would have problems saying the German word for squirrel. Yeah, it's. To be fair, there's there's many a uh, German football team that I struggle with. Um, uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach, I think. Oh, you, <laughs> I mean, you, oh, you, you mean Borussia Mönchengladbach? Yeah, that's easy. That's, yeah, exactly. um, <laughs> there we go. Yeah. <laughs> that's easy. No, it's not easy. It's a lot of letters and a lot of work. Yeah. Anyway, I, moving quickly on, swiftly moving on. Uh, Michelle says, um, "Thank you very much. Great job. Uh, thank you for everything you do. Greetings from Poland. Thank you. Shall we do it? Shall we do it? Sorry, moderators. Post in chat where you're watching from." And I'll try and speed read, read these out because I know I'm just basically waiting for Alex to interrupt me with super pop load. But while we're here, let's do it. Let's post where you're from in chat. And I'll quickly read out some various ones. Uh, Oklahoma, Scotland, Germany, Arizona. Oh, can't keep up. US, USA. I think most are from USA. UK, California, Rhode Island, Romania, UK, Netherlands, Canada, Denmark, Northern Utah. South Carolina, Ohio, which I'm told is the best American state, by the way. <laughs> that's true. Or not. I've, been told as Mar I've been told Ohio is the best American state. Um, Yeovil, UK, uh, Alabama, USA, UK, France, Holland, Mich uh, Liverpool, the India, one from Liverpool. Vandenberg. I'm waiting for a Yorkshire one. Hang on. Belgium, Somerset, South Korea, uh, Netherlands, UK, North Wales. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Leeds, uh oh. -uh. Okay, well... Someone's from, someone's well, from Leeds. Go on, well, 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 you keep that. Uh, I guess I should give a, a status update. Yes. Uh, because the tower vent has stopped, or like... It, it, it never really truly stops, because it does like that little trickling that you can see there, but it, it has faded away almost completely, right? The OLM vent has also faded away. 
and that is usually an indication that they have started liquid oxygen load on both the ship for the tower and the OLM will be for the uh, booster. You, there you can see that the OLM vent is like, again, it's a bit of, of, of a trickle, but it is not a powerful vent. It's just because there's some remains there of, of the oxygen on the line. And so some, sometimes it just keeps dripping as, uh, you know, it, there's still some some of that remaining. So the next thing that we should see, just like we saw on Wednesday, it's most likely uh, frost on the liquid oxygen tank of the ship. So that's going to be our next clue as how things are going. That's the point in the count where on Wednesday they seem to have aborted that that, that test. So if it goes well today, uh, they should go smoothly through that point on the countdown. Very good. I did see a York, a Jimmy from York. Welcome, a local, and I saw quite a few Hartley pools. We're suddenly massive in Hartley pool, which is surprising, but there we go. <laughs> Let's all the same people in the same room. Uh, on that bombshell, I am going to hand over the hosting reins to the capable hands of Jack. Jack, do we have you on communications? Uh, maybe. I don't. I don't. I don't know if I have capable hands, Chris. Too late. I've decided you do. <laughs> So I'm going to hand over. I will be back on later, probably, if this carries on for many, many hours. But for now, I'm going to bid you adieu and hand you over to Jack. Thank you, everybody. Excellent. Thank you, Chris. Uh, who's even here? It's Alex and... Adrian. Adrian! How you doing, dude? You got... I'm doing great. How about you? No complaints. Perfect. That's good. That's a that's a good situation if we want to talk about Starship because you're you joined right at prop load, or like so, soon to be prop load. So do we think they're gonna hit prop load, or do we think that they're gonna hit some kind of issue again, like we saw on the previous attempt? What's the general what's the general vibe amongst y'all folks? I'm I'm optimistic. I I think they will. We will see some frosty vehicles today. Look at that! Look at that sub cooler. That's that's up Yeah, that sub is doing work right now. We talk a lot about yeah. waterfall mode with uh, the the tower and and launch mount vents. Uh, I think we should add a new terminology, and I think it should be geyser mode for the sub coolers because that is that is an absolute yeah. plume Jack, of nitrogen right there. You remember when I used to say it's a sideways vent, and then Das tried to correct me and say side worse vent yeah <laughs> well, it's not even to the side it's like inclined it has like a little bit of a slope to it i don't know it's not it's not going up it's not going to the side it's like it's inclined yeah but like, inclined it's, vent. Not an, it's not an inclined plane but it is an inclined vent inclined with a slight slope vent doesn't sound that great though it's kind of like like a mouthful of words and now it's not just one, it's multiple. Whoa. Once they start the, that's, well, that's the Pope vent. But once they start the, the methane load on the booster, then we're going to see the other uh, subcooters. Ah, there we go. Look at that. Look at that. Just as I was talking about it, the others are going off. That's booster, booster uh, methane load. Yeah, they're loading methane on the booster now. Look Excellent. at that. Oh, Excellent. I love it. Exactly what we want to see today. We need to get this, well, SpaceX needs to get this wet dress rehearsal done. In order to, uh, in order to progress into the launch campaign for Flight Three, so this is exactly what we want to see. That looks fantastic, and we should just be like minutes, seconds away from seeing some good old frost rings on these vehicles. Yeah, and uh, Adrian, refresh our memories, if you might. Um, what sort of timeline does SpaceX? fuel Starship on? Like, how long, if they do a full wet dress rehearsal between now, which we presume is the start of methane load, and when the thing will be fully full? So, the thing is, we don't exactly know because they modified the tank farm so much. So it's like, that's that's kind of the interesting thing we are looking here. Like, what, how, how fast are they going now? However, looking at the time at the top left right now, I cannot... I cannot shake away the thought that they are talking around noon for simulated T zero. Like Alex, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is like suspiciously close to a noon T zero probably. Yeah. Um 
Sorry, I was I was writing down the times because I'm tr trying to keep track <laughs> of the times. I can tell you were doing something with a spreadsheet or something with numbers. That's <laughs> that, I know that tone in your voice. Yeah. You have the two you have the two people here now that have like a like a tension problem because they're always going to their left monitor and like need to be poked with a stick. Like stop spreadsheeting, start talking. I would never poke either of you with a stick. I mean, I want you to keep spreadsheeting. So nice. the tower vent has stopped, the OLM vent is still going. So yeah. that's not prop load yet, right? Because the OLM yeah, vent for the oxygen stop. at least Yeah, for the the oxygen side at least it, it seems like it's taking a little bit more time. The but you can see I believe we can see some condensation coming from the engine section. I I'm not sure if we can maybe zoom in or if it's coming from behind. But you can see oh, some, some condensation underneath of the booster. I believe you're right. There's condensation coming from the bottom of the booster. And but but remember, they're already starting to load methane. So, because we saw those methane subcores already going bonkers for the for the booster, and so it is probably that what we're seeing here that the the, the engine section is getting. Uh, because it, it's connected to the liquid oxygen side and the methane side, so if you get any sort of frosty stuff, cryogenic stuff onto the onto the booster, then you obviously get some some condensation from below. You can see there one of the pipes there on that leg is frosty. That's the the liquid oxygen line to the OLM. That's the one. Hey, at, at, at the other side, it's making that that OLM vent. Hey Jack, do you feel at home, by the way, with all of this fog? <laughs> really? Really? We we literally I mean, just we just had a Vandenberg launch yesterday that was crystal clear. Really? For I now, mean, for now. No. Every <laughs> clock is every broken <laughs> clock is right twice a day. Or wow. Something like that, I don't know. Wow. Did you wow, just call you... Vandenberg a broken clock? He did. He did and I'm like I'm still it's, processing how it's hurt I am. Broke. <laughs> um, oh my god, Alex. <laughs> I'm trying, like, what? Shots fired. I hop on the stream and I just immediately shots fired. Perfect. Uh. Look at these methane subcoolers. Like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice segue. Very nice segue, Adrian. Keep it, <laughs> keep it on the rails, sure. <laughs> let's, let's cool it down. So, subcoolers, huh? Wow. Uh, Good way to have you here, Jack. Wow. <laughs> Good deal. I think Wonderful. we're all super excited to see this full stack tested. Any day you have a full stack on the pad and getting frosty is a good day in my book. And holy cloud clouds, is this like just like the nature of the environmental conditions today that we're getting this much condensation? Yes. Uh, usually if the like if humidity is already being preferred by the fog kinda like if you have a situation where you got already get a lot of fog, that already gives also. Oh, I think the pad vent has stopped. It has stopped. Yeah, oh, then we should. Like it. We should keep a very close eye on the bottom of the booster here because the frost ring will start in like. That is. Quickly. Ten fifty three, right? So I'm gonna write yes. it down. <laughs> I think write we will down. see. We will see a frost ring in like like usually we are talking about less than two or three minutes here. Yeah, minutes here, mean... not. Yeah. No, go, go ahead. ahead, go ahead. No, you. Well, I was going to say, now we have seen the indications for uh, liquid oxygen and methane uh, uh, being loaded onto the ship. Methane and oxygen onto the booster, so that means all four main tanks and maybe the header tanks are being loaded as well. So the whole rocket is being loaded. Now the next thing is frost, as you mentioned. Absolutely. Is that, I'm starting to see frost already on the ship, I think. It's yeah, right. kind of covered yeah. by, by, the, by the the clouds, but I kind of saw there some condensation on the bottom of the of the liquid oxygen tank. Yeah, I, I see, see exactly on, what you're talking away. about. I see move exactly what you're talking about. Yes. There. Uh, no. There. <laughs> no. Come on, cloud. Just a little bit lower. There. And no. Go. Uh, uh, but I'm already seeing it. There you go. There you go. Uh, 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 almost. <laughs> it's just a little cloudy. It's still good. It's still good. Now we can see. Look at that. It's yeah, like absolutely. steam coming off from the bottom of the liquid oxygen tank. 
really quickly here. And it's fast way. On the booster. Sorry. Yay! No, we're we're into fueling. That's exactly what we wanted to see. Excellent. Bideford, thank you for gifting ten red team memberships. You're the best. Jay Gibson gifting a pad rat membership. Brian Green, thank you for the support. They say love the streams and love the chat people. Makes me sad we aren't all members, but I can only do so much. Aw, thank you, Brian, for everything that you are doing to get more members into the system so they can experience the awesome membership program. Yep, they just gifted 10 more red team memberships. Be sure to thank them in chat. And holy cannoli, Jerwa gifting 50 red team memberships. Jerwa, I don't know how you do it. Coming out, supporting our streams nonstop. So many of you, like Bideford, for example, and I, I see Brian Green's name a lot too, especially lately. So, it's not it does not go unnoticed. Jerwa, we need to throw some more cursed rocket emojis into the uh, into party chat. Um, remind me to do that later today. But thank you so much for gifting 50 red team memberships. That's incredibly generous of you, and uh, that means 50 people now get to have the membership program on top of all of the other gifted memberships. Oh, we had that view of the of the frosty ship. Come on. This cloud will end any second now. Any second. seconds. It's really it's remarkable how much condensation we're getting today. Yep. But I mean, we are in the full in, full on red dress rehearsal. The village has been evacuated. The roadblock is all the way back to the to the far roadblock side. Uh, we are we are in exactly what we want to see for a full red dress rehearsal of. Ship 28 and Booster 10 ahead of the third Starship flight. Which is exciting, I guess? Oh dear. All of this venting. <laughs> it's amazing. It's very exciting, absolutely. It's not even... It's not even a guess. It's extremely exciting. Because this is a critical Look test. Look at that. Wow. It, like, it's, it's just like it's yeah. sitting on top of a cloud. I mean, what this would be bad for launch day. Because nobody would see it. Well, oh, yeah. yes and no. I mean, it'd be harder to see the deluge start up, but I bet that once the engine started, a lot of that would just get obliterated. Like, you know, when you on Flight 2 or, or with other rocks as well, like Rock 9 and Atlas and all them, uh, at liftoff, you can see the pressure waves from the engines, like, rippling through the condensation. I feel like... If it if this was a launch day, which to be clear it's not, oh. if this was a launch day, it it would probably look spectacular. I love the I look like this this shape that the methane subcoolers make almost, because they go in two different directions. You can see now there's it's also frost on the methane tank on the ship up top. There's two Ooh. frost lines now. Oh yeah, you can see it very clearly. Look at that. That's going up yeah, fast. Talk about it. <laughs> Adrian, the those methane subcooler vents are so crazy, and because they're angled like that, like, okay, hear me out. What if they put two more underneath them and had the vents angled opposed to the current ones, so it just makes a giant venti X? Like, that would be on brand, right? Yeah, or they put, uh, or they put two next to that, and they make it a big W. <laughs> Common SpaceX W. You can say that every time they do a wet dress rehearsal. Um, I love how so everything's kind of fucked out. Right. So yeah, uh, we're into prop load in earnest. Methane and oxygen going on to the ship. Is, have, we, have we talked about why it, we think it is that they're going with ship fueling first now? Which we previously, before this stack, they go with booster first? Oh! Look! I look think at them. the booster. Look at oh, that look at vent. That. That's gorgeous. It's going That's crazy. so cool. I think the, the booster is also getting frosty. I'm seeing a frost ring on the methane tank of the booster. Excellent. Everything is according to plan. It's a liquid oxygen tank. But yeah, uh, it's getting frosty. It's getting frosty, believe me. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to take your word for it. Yes. Look at the go. venting from the ship. This vehicle truly coming alive now. This is gorgeous. Right? Like, what a sight. 
Some of the condensation and the fog and everything makes this more cinematic, almost. Yes, I agree. This is a very moody wet dress rehearsal day, and I am 100% here for it. Look at that. That is gorgeous. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and limit the number of times I say look at that, but for real, this is, this is a, quite a sight right now. You only you only did it too much if there's a, like a Kevin Michael Reed sponsored kind of timer in the top right of like look at that with your <laughs> face next to it or something. <laughs> like good grief and things like that. Yes. Yeah. Have, you, have, have you guys seen the 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 guy on YouTube that just goes, "Would you look at that?" It's like I'm just gonna no. turn into him. <laughs> like that's Would your you, commentary purposes. Would you look at that? I mean, just just look at it. Does it look to you like the liquid oxygen tank is also getting frosty? Yeah, it seems yeah, I, like oh, absolutely. it's just a few it, rings. Yep. But that's a good question, like, Alex, why are they kind of starting with ship now instead of booster? Well, I, I really don't know, but it might be due to their new setup where they can do ship and booster independently now uh, in terms of the subcooling and pumping and things like that. So they're probably trying to optimize the way that they load things on, on the vehicles. I'm not really sure. The the booster is ironic that it's coming last because it's actually the one that, that needs a lot more fuel and more oxidizer to be loaded. Like it's it's 3,600 tons of propellant. It's a lot of propellant that you need to load on the booster compared to the ship. The ship is about a third of that. So it's really interesting that it is the, the one that comes after the, the ship. But, you know, uh, we'll, we'll see. It's definitely growing fast. That Those frost lines are growing really, really fast. And I'm interested to see how long it takes for this thing to get fueled. Yeah, not all of the new hardware is plumbed in yet, right? But some of it is? Like, what? where do we think the status is with the new additions to the orbital tank farm? Well, the tanks are not. Uh, the, the new tanks, the new nine tanks that, ha that they have added, they're working on it, and it might be ready maybe for Flight 4, but it doesn't seem like it, it'll be ready for Flight 3. But the subcoolers and the pumps, they have been added, and the cool thing now that they have is, uh, of the subcoolers on the liquid oxygen side and the methane side, they have a subset for the ship, and then a subset for the booster, and so they can independently uh, sort of load the, the vehicles without really affecting each other's propellant load. And and so, because in the past, we used to, to see that they started with a booster and the ship will come later. And at that point, when they started the, the, the ship load, because they shared the same resources, the, the, the rate of propellant load on the booster will slow down at that point in the count. And it will take a lot longer to be able to be filled. Now they have more subcoolers, more pumps, and now they are separated between the two stages. So that, that is good, because that means they can independently do that without affecting each other's propellant loads, as I mentioned before. So yeah, uh, that, is, that is a really neat thing to have. I'm looking forward to the, that, that, uh, that nose conventing with, uh, with the header tanks and the new cowbell vents. I'm really interested to see if we're going to see those venting. Right. We'll keep our eyes open. Frost rapidly rising on the ship and the booster. But really quick, we have a announcement, a shop announcement Ooh. from none other than Mr. Shop, Adrian. Adrian, what's the, I, uh, what's the word? I'm, I, first off, I'm just Mr. One Third of Shop. Um, but yes, uh, so you know our cool flight three patch right which uh, yes. is supposed to ship in uh, march well we got news this morning that our flight patch has been in fact delivered and i think we have some pictures here uh, of, of the uh with at people's hand here so it will now uh it's not yet in a process where it, it's already going out to people that will take with maybe like Tuesday, Wednesday, somewhere in that range, because we'll now go to our fulfillment of a warehouse and from there out to go into it all. But here you go, the patch is uh, in our hands now, and uh, we hope to start deliveries uh, as early as mid next week. There you can see the first, second, and third patch of NSF for every Starship flight here. Uh, so far, every of these three is in stock, although it gets a bit close with, uh, with them now. Uh, and uh, if you want to get them, um, uh, go to shop.nasaspacer.com. We now have, uh, hopefully, all of them in delivery mid-next week. Who, 
Who took those photos? I need I need to know who took the photos because there's all three patches and a ruler. This is like the most the most uh, organized <laughs> product photo. Like look at that. That's great. You can really get a sense of feel of if you have the either if you have either of the two first patches, you can see how the third one stacks up. The ruler for who would I guess? Uh, who makes I, like I an was, NSV oh. organized the uh, pictures that yeah. probably has cool ideas? <laughs> okay, I was gonna say Pauline because she designed the patch, but I wasn't getting a super Pauline vibe there. So, based on your hint, I'm gonna say Das. <laughs> <laughs> That's in fact correct. <laughs> nice, good stuff, Das. <laughs> Of course he puts a ruler in frame. He's Das. <laughs> yeah, of course. So you have a proper size estimation. That totally makes sense. Excellent. Why would you need something for scale if you can use a scale? Exactly. Ruler for uh, scale. No one ever says ruler. Everyone always says banana for scale. No one ever says ruler for scale. Yeah, ruler is the scale. Uh, Alex, uh, is, uh, I, I think you have some maybe not so... Perfect news? I am trying to see what else might be happening. Uh, gi give it give it four or five more minutes, and okay. I'll tell you what the possible news might be. I'm trying to see here. <laughs> yeah, because I'm looking at it right now. It, it looked a bit calmer than before. We are getting more pictures with more measurement instruments on the patch. <laughs> Jack, you're muted, by the way. All right, good. I'm glad I was muted because I've been rambling this whole time, and I was like, "Can they not hear me?" No, they they cannot hear me because I was muted. Um, yeah. Yes, Kevin. Can we? Whenever you get a chance, can we get that that most recent patch image from DOS on screen? It is it is too, it is too good. That is too good. So maybe a pause or maybe a hold. We'll have to see what happens next. But either way, we're hanging out, answering your questions, thanking you for the support, and making fun patch jokes in our back channel. Can, at some point, we will. We will. Sh oh my gosh! There's another. There's another one. Oh, yeah, that's a metric it. imperial. Uh, pro uh, it's. Uh, I, I'm right now trying to look at all of these other cameras here, and I don't like a lot of things I'm seeing right now. I have to say. Um, Explain. So, I would say the activity on the tank farm has started to decrease significantly. Uh, also, Alex, also mentioning here, um, mm. the frost strings on the booster have stopped rising. Yeah, I'm looking at, at one of our shots here. I believe it's part of the multi on the members multi view, by the way. So you can look it up as well. And it doesn't look like the frost line has risen in the last few minutes. And the thing that, so that that's why I wanted a, a few more minutes. And thanks for for holding the fort, I guess, on that. Is that um, I saw that tower vent. You can see that tower uh, vent uh, has come back a little bit. Usually indicates a pause on the liquid oxygen load on on the ship. The OLM vent also returned, which also means a pause on the liquid oxygen load on the booster. It is not clear what is going on right now, but it is true that after a few minutes of observing that, that frost line on the booster uh, oxygen side, it's it's looking like it's holding, so it's not growing. And yeah, and also the methane subcoolers, I'm keeping an eye on them, and they don't seem to be that very active. And the you can see the, the recondenser vent, which is sort of where you see that, that boom crane there on the right that is the vent that is from the recondenser usually appears when they are holding uh, on the yeah. missing side as well not great right. news and yeah um, but not unexpected again we have talked about all day long today and on Wednesday we also emphasized this that they have installed a lot of new hardware and a lot of new systems and so issues are to be expected yeah, I couldn't have said it better myself, Alex. There's been a lot of modifications to the tank farm. These vehicles are not uh, identical copies of the ones that came before them. So a whole lot of, uh, of changes being tested, both ground side and vehicle side, with this test. So uh, it looks like they have entered some kind of hold. 
Either way, the window today, correct me if I'm wrong, goes till 8 p.m. for the road closure. So plenty of time to diagnose and see uh, if they can fix the problem. And even if you if you all remember the previous wet dress rehearsal attempt that we streamed, what was it, Wednesday? Uh, even after it was pretty clear that there was going to be no additional prop loaded on the vehicle, we still got that deluge test, which oh. was which was quite quite a treat. So even if they load no more propellant on the vehicle for the entire rest of the day, which you know could be likely, could be unlikely, we we can't really say. But even if this is all we get today in terms of prop load, we still have a deluge test to look forward to, and who knows what other. Uh, tricks SpaceX will pull out of their their space helmet hat. I don't know. You get it. Uh, speaking of <laughs> we get it. Speaking of get it. Speaking of getting it. Uh, can we, Kevin? Can we do the? Can we? Oh my God. Okay. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's the, it's the Imperial version. Yes, it's the correct one with sensible units. That's what. Oh yes. Three point seventy five inches. Is is that what it says? Yeah, that's what it looks like. We we need zoomies on that picture. <laughs> I love it. Oh, yeah, good stuff. That, 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 that will perform on, on every single patch. Will perform a measurement uh, uh, to make Ooh. sure they are all up to spec. Zoomies, <laughs> look stuff. at that. Yeah, there you go. Three point seven five inches. I love there it. at the top, it has an imperial to metric button. It have does have a. One it does have a button, but why would you ever press it? I mean. You want to use sensible. You want to use sensible units, right? Like, yeah, you know, ones I that mean, make ones that make sense. Jack, you yeah, should know that buttons are are there to be pressed. That's true. More buttons, more better. I want to press the red one. Like the the problem with red buttons is I always want to press them. Yeah, that's true. And there we go. In metric, ninety five point twenty five. Well, I mean. It is not entirely. So if you can, that's, if, that's, if you, go ahead. That's that's cheating. It's not entirely touching. You can see there. Go go down, Kevin. No. You can see it is not completely touching. So it is not a correct measurement. I know that because I, <laughs> I had to use <laughs> tools like this on on, on the lab. <laughs> so yeah, see, it's not touching. <laughs> so probably closer to 95 even 95 is what like i don't even know millimeters what is it, what is even a millimeter it's one tenth of a centimeter i i can't i can't even i mean what it gets the, the the relation between centimeter and decimeter it's yeah i know it's a, yeah i, I know you it's know? all tens i get it i understand yeah, it's, i don't it's I still sick. don't like it okay adrian <laughs> My, my simple American brain cannot comprehend. <laughs> uh, John O'Neill, thank you for becoming a Capcom member. You get Discord access with Capcom membership, so pop into Discord and say, hey, Mr. Musk Rat, uh, thank you for the super chat. They say, just chilling, watching oh. NSF, and, and eating wings. It's a good day. Nice. Uh oh. Yeah, uh oh, Das is uh -oh, Das is uh -oh. responding to being <laughs> called out. <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, all right, well, well, that plays out in our back channel. Oh. <laughs> chat has Chat has no idea what we're talking about right now, but Das uploaded a picture of the patch in the caliper, but it's like it, it's just being utterly squashed by the by the. The caliper, right? Or mic <laughs> micrometer? I don't even know what the proper term is. Oh, uh, that's too good. That, that is too good. I have tears oh, in my eyes. Like wings. <laughs> El, Hoto, great. El Hoto Games in chat says, Why does Jack have such weird opinions? I don't know, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> good question. Good question. I never said they're right. I just vociferously argue in favor of my opinions oh is this it yes <laughs> well at least now you can see that it can be very well folded i guess <laughs> yes it is it's it a is a, patch. a stress test i guess it, it can be folded it's a stress test rehearsal i guess 
I love anyway. just the dear Alex about it. <laughs> yeah, you can see that. Dear Alex. Chat loves it. There you go. <laughs> James I Powers. Go ahead. Sorry, sorry, I was going to say that. I love the fact that he actually went out and redid the picture with the with, with that folded in <laughs> just for him, yeah, for for this. It's, it's that's crazy. what we get. That's what we get for talking smack. Um, James Powers, thank you for the support. They say, will the chine length be extended by a ring or two once booster catches start occurring? My thoughts are that they may want extra two CO two for after catching. I guess that would be a fire suppression thing. Makes sense. I, I'm not really sure. It's it's a good question though, huh? Now now it makes me go think about that. Uh, I'll I'll try to, to to mull on those thoughts. I guess. Uh, Terry Heaton, thank you for the support. They say, would you please discuss the flight plan? Why do they keep sticking to the, with the original plan? They've advanced their technology so much that I think they'd try a more complete flight test. I think part of it is they already have approval for this profile, and changing the profile. It's like it's like a domino effect kind of thing. When you change the profile, a whole bunch of other stuff comes into question. Uh, let's see here, John Deppner. Oh my God, I did the I did their name wrong again. John Depker. Thank you for the support. They say because you acknowledged Ohio as the best. Anonymous, thank you for grabbing a trinket for your collection from the store there. Uh, Marco. Thank you for the store purchase. Uh, well, no, for the super chat. They say store tip. Get the duvet cover with Starship on it. I would love to have one. Adrian, duvet covers? What? A, what, what? You know, it's like the the blanket cover kind of thing. I I have to Google that. Google it. Oh, like a pillowcase? For a blanket, yeah. We can look at that. Uh, just no Starship body pillows, please. Luca Babnik, thank you for the support. They say, do vents freeze in the fog? No, not really. <laughs> Doss, I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can repeat this. Uh, Doss, is that repeatable on stream? Um, Plutonium two thirty nine. Thank you for the support. They say, do you think? They will use three large Raptor engines on Starship in space for the first time while in orbit. I think they're talking about the Raptor Vax. Yes, they will. That's the same. The Raptor Vax are necessary in order to get. Okay, okay. Well, I can report. Das's wife just said, no, just yelled no in all caps to a duvet cover. <laughs> oh, that's, that's too good. That's too good. All right. Well, I think at this point we will relieve you, Adrian, and let you uh, rest your, your poor voice there. <laughs> All good. Cool deal. Well, thanks for being on, buddy. Uh, we will let you go and replace you with Sawyer. Sawyer, how are you doing? Duvet or not duvet? There is no try. I'm doing good. How are you? All right, so Boy. Sawyer's leaving. Adrian is coming back. <laughs> Adrian, how are you doing, man? Bye. <laughs> oh, uh, good deal. Starting off strong today, but hey, with the uh, the holes and things going on with this wet dress rehearsal, gotta have a little fun. Indeed, as we sit around and tank watch. Wow, chat is absolutely full of pun tokens right now. Oh, good I'm job, collecting Sawyer. every single one of them. Good deal. Well, Alex, we want to give uh, give Sawyer a little state of the ship in booster right now. Yeah, so we went into propel load uh, a few minutes ago. Uh, I can actually sort of tell you when. Uh, yeah, the ship methane load started about 30 minutes ago. Uh, 40 minutes ago, excuse me. Uh, and the booster lux load started about uh, 25 minutes or so. But then uh, you can see there uh, we saw frost coming on on the ship and on the booster. And this is pretty much where we are right now. It it hasn't grown uh, any, any further. There was a, a apparent hold about a few minutes ago, about 10, 
minutes or so. And uh, so far, we haven't seen any return of the frost line, like the, the frost line growing again. Um, as far as I know, I, I think Starship does have a hold capability, but I believe it is after propellant load has been completed. So I'm not sure if they're going to be attempting uh, to continue with a, with a hold, uh, with, with a count, or rather detanking and then try again. That's, that's potentially a, a possibility, because the road closure lasts until 8 p.m. Central, and we are right now 11.20 a.m. Central. So there's plenty of time to try again. Uh, the question will then be down to commodities, for example, whether they have the, the liquid nitrogen needed to, to run the, the subcoolers and things like that, the liquid auction and liquid methane to be able to run, to go for another run. Um, so yeah, it's, it's all down to that. And also, I guess, uh, the third reason uh, to maybe try or not to try, I guess, is uh, whatever cost this hold in account, right? Uh, if they can fix it in time, then that could be a reason to, to retry again today, of course. So, yeah, that's that's sort of where we are right now, where it seems like they are in some sort of a hold. We're waiting to see what they're trying to decide here. Uh, but so far, it's not very clear. Not just because there's fog, but also because the decisions are not clear. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good, too. Yeah. That's it, a does it look for like you. the frost is starting to recede on the booster? Yeah, it, it yeah. kind of looks like there's some there's some defrosting in progress right now. So obviously that that kind of indicates that they are detanking. Again, we we had already seen some early signs of that detanking with a recondenser active and things like that. Um, but definitely this is a clear sign now that they are obviously detanking. But again, they could try again today uh, in the same window and it'll all come down to whether they have solved the issue that they have found on this on this count. We're not sure what, what else happened, obviously. And if they are able to resume the count, whether they have the the all, all of the consumables that they, that they need to be able to proceed with that, which is, again, nitrogen for the tank farm and methane and oxygen for uh, all of the tanks on the on the rocket. So, yeah. Right. Sawyer, how do you feel when you see a vehicle like this coming alive? I mean, it's it never gets old. Let's say that. I mean, this is the largest rocket ever built, the most powerful. It's it's so cool to see this basically tin can become a living, breathing vehicle. Uh, so it's even these wet dress rehearsals, just to see it ready to be flown, even though it's not going to fly today, it just gets you excited. Couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, let's see here. Plutonium239, thank you for the support. They say, do you think they will use the three large Raptor? Oh, we already did that one. Yes, they're going to use the Arvex. They have to use all six. Uh, Scott M, thanks for becoming a Padrat member. Mark, thank you for the store purchase. They say thanks for the coverage. Greetings from Germany. Ben Newberry, they say those sub vents are insane. That looks awesome. It did look awesome while they were doing their thing. Now they've sort of petered out. Deborah Hall, thank you for the support. They say bacon band aid for a wounded Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Anonymous, grabbing the patch from the store. Thank you for that. Joe Howard, gifting five red team memberships. Inmay Haas, thank you for the support. They say practical. Would Starship full stack. Oh, uh, wow. Uh, D Dima 3D Print, thank you for becoming a Capcom member. Um, again, Discord access at Capcom level and above. JC Davis, thank you for the support. They say... Uh, what will you do if they launch on a foggy day like this? You know what? I'll be bummed out. We always talk about SN11, for example, as an example of a foggy launch. That would be suboptimal for sure. But it's a rocket. Here's, the th here's the thing. If it does launch on a foggy day like this, 
it's not the end of the world. You know why? Because there's going to be plenty more Starship launches and plenty more cool milestones, like the first tanker, the first HLS ship, the first stretched Starship, like a lot of other cool milestones coming. So worst case, if we, you know, if we don't see launch on Flight 3 because of fog, not the end of the world. With the with SN11, it kind of hurt more, right? Because we knew they were only going to do those low altitude hops uh, a, a, a set number of times. And so missing visuals on one of those hurts particularly. And then also with SN11, it hurts extra just because it blew up like, what, a thousand feet off the ground? Which would have been freaking spectacular to see if we could have seen it. That so. sounds like the answer of someone who's seen way too many launches out of Vandenberg, a.k.a. not seen them because of fog. Sawyer. You yes, can hear Alex. a magnificent launch, though. Oh, yeah. Sawyer. Alex. Sawyer. Jack. We're friends here. We're being friends here, okay? We're not, we're not berating me about weather patterns in the coast of California that I can't control. And sometimes we're friends have to tell friends that they're wrong when it comes to the best coast. Yeah, oh see? my god! <laughs> I do want to though. Go ahead. Uh, sorry, because uh, I, I was actually thinking about it before when we were talking about again the the fog and everything. You you mentioned the sound sometimes, like the the fog sometimes mm, alters the way that the rocket is is like the, the sound that the rocket produces. It's really interesting uh, when you are at Vandenberg, for example, and there's actual fog. And then you record the the, the, the Falcon 9s going out from there. Because it sounds so much powerful than than from the Cape. I don't know. It, it's always quite, quite a thing. And I'm really interested to see what a... Like, I wouldn't mind once Starship is, like, on flight 100 or something if we have one foggy Starship launch. Just to figure out how loud it, it, it is. Yeah, I wouldn't be sad. Minnesota Mentat, thank you for becoming a Red Team member. John Lothridge, becoming a Pad Rat member. Thank you f so much to all of our members. I am Spaghetti. Thank you for the support. They say, hot take. Artemis is not good. I mean, SpaceX has had to build their own rocket pad and production site and have done it cheaper with more capability. Oh, uh, we could go down this rabbit hole. Uh, Artemis good. I think we would all three of us here agree Artemis good. Certain aspects of how parts of the Artemis program have been managed, less good. But Artemis as a whole, I think we can all agree, good. Do I, do I have any dissent among the ranks? No, not really. And I think the one thing that people forget sometimes is that part of being able to build Starship was with the help of NASA. There is... NASA funding that goes into this since, again, Starship is scheduled to be the lander for Artemis 3 and 4. So... Right, it's, it's what, like a $2 billion con dollar contract with NASA for the first three landers or something along those lines, so... Exactly. And, you know, they're saying that Artemis is bad and all that, but there's still a way to get astronauts to the moon, and that is Artemis right now, where they'll then hop inside their uh, Starship lander. So, it's a joint program. Right. Without Artemis, you don't have the human landing system Starship, and you have two billion less dollars to develop Starship, so Artemis, good. Um, <laughs> Stefan, thank you for the store purchase. They say, I really enjoy your streams and decided to get the new patch for my collection. Great design. Kind greetings from Germany. Thank you. Hope you're having an excellent day over in Germany. Uh, Stefan, thanks for the store purchase. They say, I really enjoy your stream. Oh, same, same one. one. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, they, they bought two things. They bought and two things. And it's orange. Okay? It's orange. That's the best shirt. You know what? So I think amazing. for Flight 3, I'm not going to be the only one in Starbase wearing bright orange. Something tells me <laughs> I will not be the only one in Starbase wearing bright orange. So, Frost on the booster, continuing to, uh, I guess, defrost, for lack of a better term. And still looks like we're in a hold. We'll keep our eye on the roadblock. We'll keep our eye on all the other indicators that we can see. 
Definitely a decrease in activity from the tank farm. Uh, that's why we call it tank watching. John Depker, thank you for the super chat. They say, when the RS-25s test fire and make a fog, it rains downrange. With all this frozen condensation from these vents, is it snowing downrange of Starship? Um, no, because Texas. But also, like, these vents do produce, I don't know if you want to call it rain, but, like, condensation droplets that are can be visible on camera lenses or, you know, if you did happen to be out there when the tank farm is going ham, um, you would you would notice it. And the other thing with the RS-25s is that's uh, hydrolox, so it's liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, H. To, oh. Thanks, Sawyer. You're welcome. Uh, uh, Steven, thank you for the store purchase. They say, thank you guys for the amazing coverage. Nova Raptor TV. You're welcome. And holy cow. What is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Anonymous getting eight things from the store. They got the patch for flight one. They got the patch for Flight 2. They got the patch for Flight 3. Uh, Anonymous, thank you so much. That is a huge store purchase. What else did they get? Oh, yeah, and Anonymous says Wenhop. <laughs> Wenhop.com for all your Wenhop needs. Do we still, we still have that, right? I think we still have that. Last check, we did. Keeping an eye on Highway 4. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Kevin. Kevin says, there's Hop. Er. Wow. Uh, let's see. Anonymous saying oh. moon and, and grabbing some stuff from the store. Thank you for that. Oh, well, what's going on here? Cars are returning to the usual roadblock location. So this is sort of similar to what we saw on Wednesday where they hit a hold in prop load and then the cars returned to the standard roadblock from the extended roadblock position. Which is sort of an indicator that we will not see any additional prop loaded on the vehicle for now. Now, these cars could head to the pad and do some red team stuff as as a you know, it's a technical term. What did you do at work today, honey? Oh, I just did some red team stuff. But uh yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. Just trying to keep up with support here. Nick, thank you for the store purchase. They say IFT three patch added to the collection. Thanks, NSF, for all the streams and everything else you do. Thank you. Anonymous Saying badges, we don't need no stinking badges. Yes. Classic. That is my all time Classic. favorite movie. Really? Yes, Blazing Saddles is my all time of, favorite of, film. Of all movies ever. Yes. I also had an amazing opportunity to be in a like an actual theater with a stage and all of that with a whole bunch of people, watch the movie together, and then there was a Q&A afterwards with Mel Brooks, so. Classic Sawyer Flex. That does sound amazing. Oh, yes. What's your favorite scene? Is it the bean one? Is it the one with the beans? Uh, I mean, it, that is an absolute <laughs> classic. I like the toll, the toll road scene. Okay, okay. I bet Sean's favorite scene is the one with the beans. I would not be surprised. <laughs> Tony, thank you for the store purchase. They say thank you all for having, for turning me from a non-space nerd to a full-on SpaceX nerd. You're welcome, Tony. Thank you for joining us and being excited about spaceflight. Uh, Anonymous, thank you for the support. They say how tall in patches is the full stack? <laughs> oh God, Alex, Alex, do the math. How how tall was the or what was the size of the of the patch again? Was it something 90, like five millimeters, whatever that, whatever the heck a millimeter is, or two and three quarters inches? Uh, hang on, I'm, I'm gonna yeah. try. And find <laughs> yeah, there you go. There, you, there you go, Alex. 
Also, while you're doing the math, I've been told that apparently the line was first said in the movie Treasure of the Sierra Madre, but I, I just know the, the one from Blazing Saddles as they're doing the recruitment phase. Must have been a reference in <laughs> Blazing Saddles of Sierra Madre. <laughs> it should be about 1,270 patches, more or less. To be able to, That's to get from the bottom. Yeah, a bit under 1300. Yeah. Are you sure? That seems like not a lot. It's about 10 centimeters, the patch. And the whole, and the whole stack is 120 meters. So that will be 20, uh, 1200 centimeters. So that's about a bit over 1200 uh, patches. That's it's that's only a rough estimate. I actually use a calculator to do 121,000 millimeters over 90, 92.25 or something was, or 95.25. Yeah. So you're saying yeah, it's, it's twelve? It's twelve thousand, not twelve hundred. Twelve hundred. Twelve hundred. One thousand two hundred and seventy patches. I refuse to believe that that that's. It seems like it should be like 10,000 patches or something. I'm bad at math. Welcome to NASA Space Flight. I, I have not had coffee yet today. So we right, even, I'll, have, I'll we even have an emoji on the members' Discord that is me with a calculator. That's me right now. <laughs> All right. So who's going to buy 1,200 patches and uh, start laying them out end to end? Nice. I don't even know. Do we have 1,200? I think we probably have 1,200 in the store. So look at that. We, this is the common dome of the booster. Frost is receding as the methane is being detanked or already has been detanked and the, uh, the walls of the ship or booster cool down or warm up. I can't even talk anymore. We're in a hold. That's what's happening. We're in a hold. They began loading propellant on the ship and the booster. Now tank farm activity has significantly decreased and we are waiting to see what happens next. Yeah, I think it's definitely safe to say that we've seen that frost line continuing to recede there, albeit slowly. But a reminder again, we mentioned it before, worth mentioning again, that there is always a chance that they could try again later in the window. Yeah, again, the, the window goes till 8 p.m. Um, that's when the road closure is scheduled till. They could open the road early, or they could keep it closed the entire time. I mean, heck, we've even seen them extend road closures in the past. So, uh, Kevin, thank you, in the back channel saying, 8 hours and 20 minutes left in the window. So you're saying we might have a uh, Frosty Starship during NSF Live coming up later today. <laughs> well, right. We have Sawyer. We have NSF Live in like yeah, a that's you too, hour. right? You two oh, and EJ gosh. again. Yep. So good luck. <laughs> yeah. If if y'all have missed it, we have switched NSF Live from the Sunday spot to a Friday spot, and uh, it's more of a conversational sort of hangout we figure this week in space flight which also airs on fridays uh is can be your like straight news update of what happened on the week and then uh, nasa space flight live on fridays can be sort of a director's cut kind of deal where we just hang out and chit chat and maybe we talk a little bit about the news maybe we talk about how imperial is better than metric or you know whatever I could add that Frame to the top list. <laughs> yeah, go for it. <laughs> um, I don't want to rile EJ. I, I, I do not hazard to rile EJ. I feel like that's just a losing proposition all around. Safe bet. So, Roadblock's still at Richardson, which is interesting. But... 
again, we are in some sort of hold right now, and we are waiting to see what happens next. Because yeah, I see people asking, is it a hold? Is it a scrub? It's such a long window that I don't think we can definitively say at this moment. Yeah, I mean, until until cars head to the pad and or they open the road, it's it's not really for us to say what this what the status is. If we did just be, you know, saying yeah. words for the sake of saying words. And this is pretty much what, what I told, what I was trying to explain before as well, that even if they if they were able to, you know, like if, if they have the consumables, right? It, it all comes down to, do they have enough uh, propellant? Because some of it boils off and things like that. Uh, do they have enough liquid nitrogen to be able to run the subcoolers? Do they have enough, I don't know, CO2 or some other commodities that they may use, right? Even if they had all of that, then you also need to consider the, the fact that, well, this hold was produced by something, right? And they may need to solve it. And do they really have the time today to do that? Or they may need a few days to, to work on that? Like, we, we don't really don't know. We don't have access to that information, of course. And sometimes even SpaceX may don't know the full extent to as to, you know, what, what is the problem that, that is going on. And precisely those... You know, stand downs is precisely what what gives them the the ability to be able to go into the vehicle and figure out, or or the GSC, the the ground support system, to be able to to figure out what else is going on. And so, it's it's always a bit of a of a of a mystery whether they are actually going to be again uh, going again or or not. And so, that's why waiting is important because otherwise, you know, you you can get surprised. <laughs> Yeah, I'm still kind of wondering if we'll see another deluge test today. Hmm. Same yeah, kind of thing one. happened on, on Wednesday. They started to load prop, they held, they were probably trying to troubleshoot what's going on, and then seemingly at the T0 of a nominal prop load, they, uh, they did that deluge test. So maybe we'll see another one today. We'll just have to keep our eyes open. Yeah, that's you say that. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, because I have here the, the multi-view, and as soon as you said that, I saw someone already moving cameras to see if, if the if the water <laughs> deluge was, was going to activate. <laughs> Good deal. Yeah, because that seems to be the case with all the recent tests that, you know, they've had to end early. One of them, you had the fire axe after there was the issues with the stacking, then you've got the deluge, so, Yeah. Uh, Nathaniel, thanks for the store purchase. They say, love me some Starship activity to stay entertained while quote-unquote working. <laughs> Can't wait for IFT3. Adam, thank you for the support. Getting something from the store. They say, I wear the patches on my rucksack in the field. Always makes a great conversation starter. Go 28 and 10. Go IFT3. Climb to glory. Nice. Oh, just waiting to see what happens next. I mean, this is tank watching at its finest. Anything could happen right now. They could start loading prop again and move the roadblock again. They could fire up a deluge test out of nowhere. They could, um, well, they're not going to static fire, but a guy can dream. Yeah, uh, you'd also kind of need the propellant actually loading and not unloading it, for that. Right. R right. Uh... <laughs> And, you know, an overpressure notice and the marine notice, and they wouldn't do a full stack out. Anyways, you get it. Um, Niall, thank you for the store purchases. They say, send it. Oh, we will. We will send you your store purchases. Anonymous, thank you for the uh, store purchase. They say, love you guys. Thanks for everything you do. Keep us up to date on Starship. Very kind of you. The OLM vent... Is, is, that, is it going again? It's back. Yeah. Yeah, that's normal. It's part of the process of detanking where, you know, it comes in, comes back, uh, and like, and then disappears, and then comes again. But I just, I just want to say, look at this view. You can see the rocket. As soon as they stopped doing anything, the weather said, you know what? I'm going to get cleared. What about that? <laughs> It's I mean, always I think pretty a, slow, I guess. I think a non, a non-zero amount of what was obscuring our view was coming from the tank farm itself. Like okay. it is a gray. Mm -hmm. 
it is a gray day in, in Boca today, but a lot of that condensation was coming from the tank farm itself, which is really remarkable to see it either spool up or spool down and, and see the difference. Steven, thank you for the support. They say, so awesome. Been a watch party addict since SN10. Thank you all coming to Boca Chica with a kilt gift. Oh, God. Uh, Andrew, thank you for the, the store purchase. They say, make ship go now. <laughs> Is that a Simpsons reference? I think that's a Simpsons <laughs> reference. I think so. Yeah. Make, make rocket launch now. Um, Anonymous, thank you for the support. They say, hi, NSF. As a viewer, I feel I'm, like I'm part of the team, which makes me enjoy your accomplishment. You make just proud of it all. Love you guys. Be from the other side of the ocean. Thank you so much. It really means the world to us that y'all are willing to come out and hang out and tank watch, and we all just get to chillax and prognosticate about rocketry. Uh, Gustavo, hopefully not Gustavo Fring. I am like three episodes left in my Breaking Bad bit re-binge. <laughs> um, Gustavo says, I'll try to keep my patch collection complete until there's too many flights to keep up. That's, I mean, that would be a good problem to have, right? David, like, thank you for the store purchase. They say good work, guys. Sorry, go ahead. I can say, though, as someone who collects patches from all of the SpaceX launches that I've been to, there is no such thing as too many patches. It's true. I have, like, a whole patch wall and also a massive stack of patches that need a home. Uh, okay, I'm going to speed run some of these just because we have so many coming in. Lucas, thank you for the store purchase. Mark, thank you for the store purchase. Nicholas, thank you for the three purchases. Dean Brillhart, uh, oh my god, I'm not even going to read that out loud. Anonymous, thank you. Jason, thank you for the support. Uh, Carson, grabbing something from the store. They say, Das, I want the bent patch. Also, is the caliper included? <laughs> <laughs> You gotta you gotta pay an extra fee for that. <laughs> right. Uh, hey, that's our Carson. Hi, Carson. Um, Rough Riders show. Rough Riders, really seriously, with a ten dollars super chat saying Gary the Grackle fan club, <laughs> and then they threw a bunch of grackles in the chat, which I am also going to do, but which you, if you're watching, should be careful doing because Nightbot might mute you. But I'm, I mean, I'm not going to stop you. But also, beware. Don't do it too much. Like, just do it, like, once. Uh, Jamie, thank you for the store purchases. David, also, thank you for the store purchases. Jamie with another one. And David with another one. These might just be coming through, like, interleaved due to simultaneous purchases. Uh, Marco says, Jack, 95 millimeters is one, a hundred, oh my god, one, one thousand, uh, 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 math, somebody say this, somebody read the, 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 hang on, let me show it, there we go. Jack, uh, one, 90 1, millimeters. Third. Yeah. One, two thousand sixty-third. It's one, one thousand of a full starship there. Yeah. Who even fractions P clearly not me uh, <laughs> let's see Jamie and David once again thank you Lynn thank you for becoming a Panorat member Richard thank you for the store purchase they say thank you for finally creating the large cer ceramic mug we heard the pleas for larger mugs I don't know if we can uh, go back to the to the other close up shot of the OLM because there's there's something really cool there. You can see there the, the the venting coming from one of those pipes. That's the engine chill pipe. I wonder if they're using it because sometimes they use it to, to dump a little bit of the oxygen out, outside. I don't. The problem with with all of this fog is that it is really complicated to see the engine chill pit. So yeah, that's gonna be interesting. Yeah, you can see that that venting coming from the OLM. Frost on the booster continuing to recede. Mm. 
Marcus Markinson, thank you for the super chat. They're asking, when is our guess as to when the first star will land on the moon for Artemis 3? What cargo will be on board? Sawyer, I'll let you go first so Alex can figure out how exactly he's going to waffle. <laughs> Ooh, waffles. Um, mm. I mean, I, it, I guess the question kind of is asking if they would do a test landing of it first before having crew on board, which maybe they would do, but in terms of... I thought that was... Wasn't that the plan? I thought they're going to do an uncrewed demo yeah. landing first. I mean, yeah. I have, in terms of payload of what they would bring, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of experiments. If I had to guess, maybe they would also bring some mementos from, say, the Wright Brothers' first flight, from Apollo 11, that kind of stuff, some historical nature. Almost like they had the capture the flag game with uh, the end of the space shuttle program leading into commercial crew. Oh, I forgot about the capture the flag thing. That was so cool. Also, that was such OLM a nice vent. little touch. <laughs> yes, the OLM vent is going and the tower vent is going probably purging lines after completing detank if I had to guess. Would you say that's a fair assessment, Alex? Yeah, and and sometimes I don't really know what they do with it, but um cuz here's the thing. When when we see a hold in the count on most of the rockets, they they do what we what we always say a detank process, and that is true for pretty much a lot of rockets. But then again, <clears throat> sometimes uh, you get people confused that what they do is they dump the propellant overboard, like they just vent it all and dump it and things like that. Ironically, Starship, SpaceX, I don't know why, but sometimes they actually dump a little bit of oxygen overboard and that's why we see there that uh, engine chill pipe uh, frosty and then also the OLM vent uh, and now the deep wow Bless you, Starship. It's just easy. <laughs> we got venting coming from all vents on the booster. The top vents by the grid fans, the cowbell vents by the common dome. If anyone was trying to take a nap, sorry about that. Good morning. <laughs> a nap at almost noon. Huh. A siesta. Wow, a siesta this is, is after a very... Very intense venting. This is, yeah. Like, this is a full depress. Do they normally do all of these at the same time? This seems uh, excessive. I don't think we saw this on Wednesday. Right. It sure you looks know, cool, though. We actually saw it. Uh, I'm looking here through the, through the live stream on Wednesday. And you know what happened? About 15 minutes later... They had the water deluge test. So, All right. They want something to look forward to, maybe, potentially, hopefully. Maybe? That was a really. Oh, and then now the so ship cool. is venting like crazy. Yeah. Right. So wow. awesome. What a what a beautiful sight. So Even it though like it means that they are not successful with their testing in the current setup. They have plenty more time in the window, and also, it just looks neat. Go ahead, Sawyer. No, I was just going to say, it seems like they went for all the booster venting and all the OLM venting there, and now the ship vent, and uh, it's just, it's amazing just to see how quickly they can depress all of this. Man, when they, uh, when they have to abort a test, it can be quite depressing. There you go, pun token <laughs> awarded. Yay. Jack Yang in chat says wet vent rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> pun token. 
There you go. Yay. So, see, there's... <laughs> I, I don't know if, if, I, if I should make the joke now, because it's a spoiler for Twist. Uh... I guess this is this is not a wet dress rehearsal. Do this it. is a damp dress rehearsal. Uh, ha, it didn't, it, it ha, didn't ha, get the, ha. the whole way. I don't know. I mean, in it, in some ways, it's also a wet dress rehearsal because it was raining. So yeah. moist dress rehearsal. Oh God, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Also, can't you just what? not make it a wet Thank dress rehearsal by throwing the dress into the the dryer, or is it hand wash only? It's hand wash only. <laughs> PN what wants a Starship body pillow. Uh, Paul Sorensen, thank you for the support. They want Sawyer to speak like Yoda for the rest of the stream. Uh, Do that, Marco. I shall not. Thank you for the support. <laughs> that was wait for it. Thank you. <laughs> Catherine, thanks for the support. They're saying thanks for WDR coverage on my 68th birthday. Everyone in chat say happy birthday to Catherine. Happy birthday, Catherine. Allison, Almost birthday buddies. Birthday. Thank you for the door purchase. They say would love an NSF tea towel. It'd make me smile while drying the dishes. What's a tea towel? Tea towel? It, it, yeah, it's like a kind of small hand-washing towel that it's also used... Obviously, with um, people trying not to get burnt with their teapots, but yeah, it's like it's a dish really rag? like a little dish towel, essentially, but kind of like a bar rag, maybe. All right. I feel like a uh, one of those with a. Oh, Westy the Third is mad at me in chat. I'm sorry, Westy the Third. Uh, a, a tea towel, I guess, or dish rag, or whatever you want to call it, with it, the. Heat. Oh, hexagon pattern would be cool. Ooh. Roger, thank you for the support. They say, okay, you talked me into orange shirt. See you there. Nice. It's all. Lord of Doves, becoming a pad rat member. Tom, becoming. Oh, no, it's Tom with a store purchase. Chris Reed, uh, becoming a pad rat member. Thank you, Tom, for the store purchase. Michael, thank you for the store purchase. They say, try saying it. Squirrel, thank oh. you for everything you do. Adrian's gone. <laughs> Adrian's yeah. gone. We can't make him say squirrel. 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 <laughs> Cameron, thank you for the support with the store purchase there. They say, I love NSF merch. I wear it daily. Just need NSF running shirts. I will not stop asking. Uh, we'll tell the store to you. Steven, thank you for the store purchase. He's like, we do have it. We oh, Jack Robotic. Store. Or is it my connection? No, I think Jack just went all robot on us there. Uh, but, but yeah, the tank watcher tank top. <laughs> I, I, I think that Jack started off it. as a, a joke back in the day and ended up actually being really cool. Yeah, I, be, I believe Jack is probably going uh, through his setup. But I see that, that, that message here that I'm sure that he was probably going to throw at me. So I'll... I'll try my hand at it. So it says uh, the Falcon grid fins are b b basically fold open for return. Why does the booster grid fins stay open? Could they cause possible deflections while flying? And this is a a good question in the sense that uh, it is a fair thing to be to be wondering, right? Because you see those grid fins and you may think, oh my gosh, this is really affecting the whole structure. But if you think about it, that is not that different from the flaps on the ship, for example. It, it does introduce a little bit of drag here and there, but by saving the amount of complexity and, and, and syst like putting a system to be able to fold them back or make them pop out and things like that, by removing all of that, you reduce a lot of the simplicity in the booster manufacturing and also the, the flying, because it's already deployed, so you don't really need to, to have a system that actually has to deploy them or, or anything like it. So. But it's a good question. Is it said definitely something that that is fair to to ask? Jack, do we have you back? I see you're muted. Oh, there we go. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yep. Am I a robot? L Partly. A little bit. Yeah. 
probably like two thirds of the way, you're you're good, but like. Good, yeah. Huh. Can people hear us now? Can you hear me now? There we go, I see five by fives. Are we going to be like Beyonce and try and break the internet with Verizon? Oh, wait. Uh, <laughs> Woo, boy. We're back. And we're seeing five by fives in chat, meaning you can hear us. Which we appreciate. All right, awesome. You can hear us again. Welcome back. If uh, you can, just make sure you let everyone know to refresh the page if it didn't already come back for you. Uh, and then you'll get our lovely voices back and hopefully some of these lovely images too. As we continue to keep an eye on uh, what appears to be the detanking of... Uh, 1028 here. You can see that vent still even coming up from the ship right now. That was a cool one. Yeah, that is the the look one of the look at auction uh, tank vents on the ship. It is super cool because now they have changed some of these vents, and so now they don't have the the cowbell vents as we call them on the on the ship uh, liquid auction tank, and and so it, it it has that sidewards vent I guess or sideway vent. <laughs> That's what will tell me it's sideways, not sideways. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it, it kind of goes to the side. I really don't know why they eliminated the cowbell vents, if I'm completely honest. They were not there on ship 20, but they were there on ship 24 and ship 25, I believe. That was the sort of the addition that they, that they included on ship 24, um, which was the first vehicle that they flew on, on an orbital test flight of a starship. So the... The, the thing about those, I, I really don't know. We're working on the on the sort of um, we're working on a changes video. To be fair, every single flight it, there's something new, and so it's always fair to 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 ask what else is new, and we get that question a lot. So we're working on a video about that uh, as always, of course, and that is one of the great mysteries of why they they remove those vents. You can see there they're not there. They should be there, but they're not, and. They're no longer there. But, but instead, you have those little vents there. It kind of has like a nozzle, if you see there, that, that vent. So I wonder if it's because they, they're sort of tweaking those vents locations for to, to use them as RCS thrusters. Because if you remember, Elon was talking about uh, both vehicles um, using their vents as RCS thrusters, as attitude thrusters. And so it is it's quite interesting. People it are is. more like... Oh, it's a vent. Why should we care? Well, that's that's how Starship may actually control its attitude while in space, so it's important. <laughs> Plus, it also seems like a bit of a mass saver there, too, of anything you can shave off the weight gives you a little bit of extra performance, even if it is, you know, only a, <laughs> a couple pounds, if that. But 
it also refining where that is and maybe while they were testing it or while they saw in flight that they realized it might be uh they might get better performance or closer to uh say a center of gravity or lift that it worked hmm. better to move it just a little bit yeah Jack, do we have you Can back? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh-huh. Everybody everybody in chat is saying I broke the stream. Uh, like I oh jeez, I blew it, you guys. I'm sorry. Oh, nah. Nah. <laughs> Jack broke the internet. Oh god. Uh <laughs> given the context of the of the phrase broke the internet, I don't think anyone wants to see me break the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I think if you wore the um, kilt, it would. Uh, not not wrong, not wrong. These legs, these hairy legs, <laughs> instant internet breaker. Uh more venting from the OLM. More venting from the vehicle. Just waiting to see what happens next. There is still, a, they're still not letting anyone to the pad yet. There is still a roadblock up. It just moved closer, correct? Yeah. Correct. I'm keeping a close eye on that roadblock, whether there are cars going to the pad or not, and trying to, you know, make sure that we don't miss any of that. Thank you, Alex. Are the chines venting? Ah, oh, well, if they are detanking, I guess the the chines should also be detanking. I guess so. No surprise, they're they're venting. And that's just the CO two. Yeah, that's CO two. You can see also there the that's the nitrogen uh, ground systems uh, venting. That is normal because if they are using nitrogen, they're probably having boil off inside of the ground tanks, and so they need to to. Remove all of that. That was quite the vent at the base there. Yeah. Adrian is asking, I read that SpaceX is looking to add another orbital launch tower at the Cape and is doing mm -hmm. an environmental review. Uh-huh. Alex, what's going on with this recent announcement? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, that is actually a thing that I sort of wrote about a few months ago that SpaceX was looking at Slick 37, the current pad that is being used by Delta for Heavy. And, and so they're looking at that to be able to put a potentially at least one. But that pad is, is big enough for, for probably more than one uh, launch pad for Starship. And so they're that, that again, that location is currently used by ULA's Delta for Heavy rocket. But that rocket has its last launch next month. Which means that after that, it's going to be empty. There's not going to be anyone using it, so SpaceX will be doing a already traditional yoink of old launch pads. <laughs> yoink! So, yoink, yeah. And so they're going to be taking that over, and right now they're obviously working already on the environmental side of things, which includes a lot of uh, comments from, from locals and things like that. And I'm sure the producer is pointing at us with these two views, because the cars that were on the launch roadblocks, I call it, because it's like the same roadblock that they have for launches and also right. for wet dress rehearsals, uh, has moved out. So it seems like those cars that were there have moved down the road and they are right now here at the village roadblock, as you will. So that's an interesting thing. Um, I do wonder if that means they're not going to keep trying today or whether they're going to be just moving temporarily it's definitely a head scratcher i guess but i mean maybe we'll see them yeah. fall back again right now mm -hmm. could be it and looks it like there was some discussion among the uh, law enforcement on site there go ahead sawyer no i was just gonna quickly mention about the cape the fact that it talks about launch and landing at 37 and also the potential for a slick 50 which would be between 37 and 40 so yeah that will be if they don't get the approval for 
having a starship at 37, then the alternative will be to just build a separate launch complex for, for starships, uh, which will be a space launch complex 50. And that actually had appeared already last year on a sort of infographic from from the US Space Force of what they wanted to do in the future. And they had a little sort of uh, conceptual uh, map of how it will look like in the future. And so they had their uh, proposed Slick 50 uh, launch pad, which is sort of a bit down the road from where the Delta IV Heavy launch pad is located. But, but yeah, um, it's definitely interesting. Uh, it's ad an addition. A lot of people took it as a sort of, oh, it's replacing 39A. I take it more as an addition rather than, than replacing it because they're going to need a lot of launch, uh, launch towers and launch pads and everything to support HLS and in the long run, and this is important to think about that in the long run, if they really wanted to, to have you know, um, multiplanetary species and everything, uh, civilization on Mars and whatever, um, if you really want to have that, you really need a lot of ships and a lot of boosters, a lot of tankers to refill all of those ships, and so you need a lot of launch pads to be able to launch a lot of times. More yeah, paths, more better, it. Jack. I, don't steal my bit, but yeah, I couldn't have really <laughs> said it better. Um, and and honestly, like you said, Alex, Delta Four Heavy is going to have its final launch in March. It has already had its final launch out of Vandenberg from Slick Six, and what happened? SpaceX leased Slick Six, so it only makes sense as the Delta Four uh, and Delta Four Heavy program winds down. I mean, Delta Four has been done for a while now, but you get my point. That those pads don't just go unused. It's it's like a turnkey solution. There's already a massive rocket that's capable of launching from them, so it only makes sense to repurpose those pads for another massive rocket. It's just it's like a, it's a no-brainer. So I, I'm I'm super happy about this announcement, and uh, we'll see where it goes from here. But you're right, Alex. They're going to need a lot of pads. This will be a fun discussion to NSF Live later. It will. Almost um, like it, we're going to talk about that. <laughs> Scott, thanks for the store purchases. Uh, they say leave the pun boy alone. Ah. <laughs> Chris, thank you for the store purchases. They said the future is now. Go SpaceX. Go NSF. Thanks for making these cool patches. Hoping I can the third, afford the third one soon before they run out. I suspect you'll be in good shape, but they are in limited quantities. But, you know, if you already have the first one and the second one, you're probably good to go for at least a little bit on the third one. But, uh, don't wait too long. Daniel, thank you for the support. They say great coverage as usual, and no, I'd rather not see Jack in a kilt. Here we go! Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> I'm on board. I don't want to be in a kilt. You don't want to see me in that. Nobody wants that. Chat thinks they want it, but they, they know not what they ask. Well, I'm sure they'll get it and then realize they've made a terrible mistake. Niall, no, no one's ever going to get me in it. No, not going to happen. Niall Anderson, <laughs> thank you for the super chat. They say, I meant send it as in the stack on my purchase message. I know what you meant, but I also was doing a pun. They're, we're going to send you the merch. Um, anonymous with more store purchases. Thank you. They say, starting my collection today. Thank you to all of us. Thank you, Anonymous. Gareth Cole with a super chat saying, when will we see SpaceX try to catch a ship? I'm going to say ship 42. Alex? Is, it, is that just because it's the answer to life, the universe, and everything? Nice. Uh, not necessarily 42, but I will say probably in the 40s. Um, Sawyer? Yeah, I, I think 45 is my guess. Fingers crossed we see a catch attempt soon. <laughs> Dr. Holly, hey. Dr. Holly in chat says, I brought this on myself by putting kilt in a, in a choice in a recent poll. All right, you know what? I, I think that was... I think that was my fault. Uh, Tyson, thank you for the store purchase. They say, I love building the patch collection. Thank you for the continued coverage. Shannon, thank you for the store purchase. They say, I always have one of my computer monitors on y'all's feeds at work. Thanks so much for what you're doing. Thank you, Shannon. Anonymous with 
store purchases, asking, will the new Mega Bay accommodate version 3 extended lane Starship? And if so, does it not make sense to knock down or move the smallest bay? And where are they going to store the Starships when they do ramp? Thanks for all your work and information and entertainment. Kilt wearers are cool. <laughs> yeah. All right, a lot of questions here. Will the new Mega Bay accommodate an extended length Starship? Yes. Uh, does it make sense to knock down the high bay? Potentially. I could see them... I mean, we already saw them kill the windbreak and kill the, uh, the mid bay. The high bay could be next. Never say never. I wouldn't be shocked if they took down the high bay and put a new Mega Bay in its place. Uh, especially once Mega Bay 2 is up and running. I was going to say, I think they would wait for the other Mega Bay to come online first before they did anything like that. And as we've seen, there are plenty of other buildings at uh, Starbase where they had originally planned for one thing, like the one for the Starlinks, and then totally repurposed it for welding. So who knows? It could also then be repurposed into some other sort of development building. I, I have one thing to say about this. Alex, you're that... not supposed to be here. I, I, you specifically hang on, asked. Hang on, you hang specifically on. asked for a 15-minute break. I only so have. You I don't, go ahead. I only have like one little comment, and it's that the current Mega Bay should support the extended length, length of Starship because apparently, from what Elon said, it's only like 15 to 20 meters uh, taller, and the Mega Bay can support a whole booster that is 70 meters tall, and then plus the hot staging ring. So there's. There's definitely room for a starship to grow like an extra 30, 40 meters probably and fit within the the mega bay. I will say though, I can see the high bay going out in even the Stargate building because uh, they're, they're planning to build a new office space near the Star Factory. So then you probably wouldn't, wouldn't need the Stargate building at that point. And so there's a space there for another mega bay. Anyways, I'm out. Are you though? And you said you had a quick, you had a quick tid. Like that was not quick. It was quick by, by my standards. It was quick. Yeah, but like a, an, a quick Alex response is like two war and pieces. Alex, I think Ryan is gonna have your head if you don't go back to writing. I'm writing. Don't worry. See, now all I want to do is bait Alex into more answers. Um, <laughs> And where are they going to store all the starships when they do ramp is the final part of this question. Hmm. I mean, probably outside for a while. <laughs> it, that's what it seems like, you know, basically an uh, active rocket garden. Good questions from Anonymous, and thank you again for the store purchases. Thank you to everybody for coming out and supporting what we do. It's It's been a challenge keeping up with all the support on the stream, so thank you for making it a challenge because... We like doing what we do, and we want to do even more cool stuff as we... Whoa, are the chopsticks closing? Apparently, the chopsticks are closing. Yeah, they're uh -oh. moving. Interesting. Uh -oh. That's Interesting. not a great sign, but... I wonder if they're just closing them for stability purposes, or if there's a potential that we would see a D-stack here at some point. Good grief. Well, uh, <laughs> if you want my thoughts, the next closure is not until Tuesday because of President's Day. So if they're truly aborting today, they may not want to have the chopsticks like that for like four days straight. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. I think. Uh, let's see... Low J88, thank you for the five curly L's. They say, how tall is the orbital launch mount? And do you think a taller version 3 ship would need a more substantial design? You know, the person I would want to ask about the launch mount is Alex. Alex, what do you think? Do you think they're going to have to make significant changes to the launch <laughs> mount design? <laughs> I'm currently writing. Uh, yeah, so I don't... I don't really think that the OLM itself needs to be taller for V3 or even the tower by by that matter. So I don't, I'm not sure. Let's put it that way. There you go. That's my if, answer. If I had to guess, the only thing they might maybe have to do is change some of the 
again, like when they raised the OLM, they raised the uh, the arm as well. I I think maybe they just might have to change where the access points are for where they begin fueling it and things like that. But I don't see any need to redo the OLM. It just may take a little bit longer to fuel. Yeah, it seems like the orbital launch mount is plenty robust. Thing is built like a battleship. I mean, uh, that's after the first two flights so far, yeah. Captain Tiki, thank you for the support. They say, can you put Starship pun tokens in the NSF store? I'd buy them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I we, we can't. We can't put them in the store. They're all for Sawyer. Like they I all, they want have a to. Pun token plushie. Just saying. Oh my like god. Like a pillow. A pun token pillow. Oh my god. Uh, Josh Zero. Thank you for the support. They say, imagine when the depress the ship, it sounds like bagpipes. Oh my god. <laughs> the kilt thing has gone <laughs> so out of control. Uh, Anonymous, thank you for the store purchase. They say, Jack, as the metric hater, can you fill me in on the inch size of your camera lenses? Oh, I just got got. I just got got. I cannot. <laughs> camera lenses are in millimeters. and I And I deal with it. Uh, Todd, thank you for the support. They say third time is a charm. Unfortunately, p perhaps not, given the chopstick movement we just saw. Jeffrey, thank you for the support. They say funniest rocket broadcast, period. Not to mention informative. Thanks, guys and girls. Thank you, Jeffrey. Richard was in Boca for the first two launches, and they're saying see you guys in Boca with a store purchase. Thank you. Brian Green, gifting a red team membership. Skulladre. Thank you for the store... No, for the super chat. They say, I would like to purchase Sawyer one pun, please. All right, you have purchased Sawyer one pun. Thank you. I will uh, make sure to use it this stream. Use it wisely. Daniel... <laughs> you know that's you. not going to happen. <laughs> Daniel, thank you for the store purchase. They say, must have all the patches. Arg. Wait, if that's the case, then does he have an eye patch too? Because that's a pirate sound. Uh... Wow. All right, already burnt through it. <laughs> yeah, you, I mean, that was good. I'll allow it. David, thank you for the store purchase. They say, thanks, NSF. I'm getting my patch number three, and I'm thrilled. We are on our way back to the moon. I think we are all pretty darn stoked to see this system get operational, if only just for the moon mission side of things. There's so many cool things that Starship can do and enable, but the, the moon is sort of, I think forefront in all of our minds because what a cool mission boom 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 right i i don't even want to think about the alternate timeline where starship did not get selected as the human landing system for artemis oh geez yeah that that would be huh i mean there are other landers that will land on future missions uh, right blue origin Arden. has has their contract for uh, a lander as well which came after starship got awarded its contract but yeah i just the word i would describe the alternate timeline where starship was not selected uh the word i would use to describe it is bleak but thankfully that's not this timeline Woo. as many things about this timeline that are bleak <laughs> yeah, well yeah we've got some serious cloud layer rolling in here can barely even see the ship anymore and just a sliver of the booster that's wild yeah it's about all we can see is from what's in this camera shot everything else is obscured wow you know I feel like no one should ever give me guff about fog at Vandenberg ever again like fog exists in all places we've seen foggy cape launches We've seen foggy Starship launches. We've seen foggy Vandenberg. Like, why does Vandenberg get such a bad rap? Because how many foggy launches have you seen at the Cape versus the number of foggy launches at Vandenberg? In the uh, all the years that I've been covering launches at the Cape going back to 2011, uh, I can only think of two where it was very foggy, and one of them, the fog cleared right before liftoff, and then the other one was uh, Falcon heavy in the fog whereas how many have you had just last year alone you know what Sawyer I'm going to need you to tone down the logic a little bit here <laughs> I need you to just uh, 
put a hold on the on the logic brain? Uh, yeah, about that. No. <laughs> the chopsticks stop. Are they continuing to close? I wonder what Alex thinks. Well, uh, I think many, many things. <laughs> He's also using his logic brain there. Uh, no, I, I already stopped. Uh, I'm, I'm done with the things that I need to do. So ask ahead. The chopsticks still moving or do they stop? Well, let me see. Because in order to write, I actually have to, to also... Uh, hey, it seems like they have stopped at the current location. Yeah, I'm doing some A-B testing here. Interesting. Our feeds. All right, well, while you A-B test, John Depker, thank you for the super chat. They say, y'all said this venting doesn't cause snow downrange. Well, uprange it does. I'm getting flurries up here in Ohio. Coincidence? I think <laughs> not. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, thank you for the store purchase. They say, your work is amazing. Keep it up from Sweden. Anonymous, they say, ooh, ethereal. <laughs> good word. Good word to describe the views today. Echo Deal, thank you for the super chat. They say, help, I'm tracked in a pun token factory. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, well, the way to get out is just keep making puns. They disappear very quickly, it turns out. Sawyer is a machine that turns bagels and cream cheese into puns. <laughs> Uh, did, did I break you, you, know what? Sorry. <laughs> you know what? It, at this point, I think this is a schmear campaign. Wow. That was okay. That one I'm not even mad about. That was really good. <laughs> Thank okay, you. it's time for me to completely go off the rails and ramble. Uh, Wait, you mean we were on the rails? I mean, somewhat. So when I first moved to Los Angeles, this is, a, this is an embarrassing story that I'm telling about myself, so strap in. When I first moved to Los Angeles, I worked for quite some time as a production assistant in the reality TV industry. And one of the things a production assistant does is get food for the crew and bring it to set. So, you know, you take everyone's orders, you put the order in, you go to the place, you pick it up, you bring it to set and set it all up so that the crew, when they're done shooting, uh, they come get their food. So I'm, I'm going to get uh, breakfast for everyone. And my boss, the production coordinator, says... Jack, go to this bagel place, get two dozen bagels, and get a whole bunch of different schmear. And I, you know, I'm a production, I'm a lowly production assistant. I'm not going to question what I'm told. I was just like, okay, I'll, I'll do that. And in my head, I'm like, what the heck is schmear? <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea that that was a, uh, a term of art for cream cheese. Um, so, yeah, I, I go to the bagel place, and I get two dozen bagels. And then I'm like, do you guys have schmear? And the look on the cashier's face, like, yeah, we have. She's like, what's wrong with you? Why are you asking this question? I was immediately like, I'm sorry, I, haven't, I don't know what schmear is. Like, it's, it's just <laughs> the guy's like, it's just cream cheese. Uh, and I was like, oh, wow, okay, I'm, I'm a big, dumb, stupid head. Uh, so that's my story about schmear. <laughs> Anyways, Starship. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that story. That is, uh, as someone who grew up on New York bagels, that is absolutely hysterical. I had never heard it called Schmear before. <laughs> Nigel, the like chopsticks. By the way, I do want to point out the chopsticks closed a heck of a lot more while we were telling that story. Yeah, it was okay, actually good. one of the things that I was going to bring up now. <laughs> good, good to know that I, you know, we're we're focusing on the important things here. They look like they're continuing to Jack close Byer. too. They look like they're continuing to close. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Lots of clouds. Inventing. All right, so lesson learned here is when we want action to get, to start happening again, we should start talking about completely irrelevant topics. <laughs> Bagels. Bagels do it because it, it's scared of the locks. I tell you what, if testing wraps up in time today, I'm going to run and get a bagel before NASA Space Flight Live just so I can... Oh, we got a pun token on screen again. Yay! Thank you. Hmm. Nigel, thank you for uh, for gifting a red team membership. Michael, thank you for the store purchases. They say I've been following you guys since SN10, and I hope to one day watch the first Starship land on Mars with you guys. 
Time to start a collection. Oh, man. The, the fun streams that are coming down the line in the coming years as the system continues to mature and progress. There's a lot of fun stuff coming up. And Anonymous with a store purchase. Thank you. They say, how many Starship launches do you estimate in 2024? Thanks for all you do. Alex, how many Starship launches do you estimate in 2024? No more than five. Sawyer? Uh, at the rate that things have been going, and especially with... If, as long as it's successful on this upcoming flight, I think four is very achievable with a chance for maybe a fifth in December. I'm going to say three to four. Continuing to watch for signs of activity. Tank farm spooling back up. Who knows what we'll see next. The chopsticks kind of throw a wrench in the works, though. I wonder if they'll try... Because here's the thing. Maybe, let's, let's say that maybe they are not going to pursue a wet dress rehearsal anymore today. Right? But, they may still want to get out some data, right? In the sense that there's an issue. They may send a team out there. They may try to, you know, go with a hammer and and hit some places here and there to try to get them back to, to life. And then be like, okay, now we're going to be doing, I don't know, like, let's... I, I'm just talking out of my back here, but, like, imagine it is something like a valve. And now they're going out there, they try to kick it down or something and try to get it back into into shape. But it's like, uh, you know, we're not going to do the wet dress. But still, we're going to try and test it. And so now they're testing the tank farm or whatever, right? Like, that could be a thing that they do with the rest of the window. We've seen in the past, heck, even on, on Wednesday, we saw them testing the, the fire suppression system on the booster. They did a lot of venting out from the bottom of the booster, precisely testing that system. So even though this might be sort of like, no more a wet dress, they are still doing a lot of testing, a lot of uh, data gathering, I guess. And, you know, they, they, they really don't seem to be... Uh, what's, what's the word? Um, like, they seem to, tr to try to take advantage of every single opportunity for testing, to try to gather as much data as possible. And that's good. Because these throat closures, they hurt. <laughs> Looking well muted. I was, thank you. Well, now uh, the booster is venting, so. It's like why you're trying to. Something is venting. Yeah, I was going to agree with you, Alex, that the road closures are no joke, and also evacuating the village is no joke. I mean, you're putting a mm. bunch of people out that, uh, you know, have to actually leave their homes. Yeah, because remember, the road is still closed. And. And so and they're doing a lot of, of, I mean, you can see here right now the, the booster is venting. And, and as we saw on Wednesday, they did a, a deluge system test. They did a uh, fire suppression system on the booster uh, testing of that. So definitely a lot of things that they could do here before they actually go out and, and say, okay, let, let's call it a day. And definitely interesting. Um, what else they're going to be doing here? Um, I'm seeing now the Chimes venting as well. I know we're focusing here on the Pope vent, but on the side, I could see the Chime venting a little bit. Yeah, you can also SpaceX Sammy, thank you for the super chat. They say, this is for your bagel and schmear for the end of the stream. Thank you. I'm going to get an everything jalapeno cheddar bagel with lox schmear. I'm... I'm I'm sorry. Are you talking cheddar jalapeno, like for the cream cheese, or is it an actual bagel with cheddar and jalapeno in the dough itself? The second thing, it's a everything bagel with cheddar and jalapeno, and then you toast it, and then you put lox schmear on that. You can see the venti chine right there. Uh, I will. You know what? I'll when I get my bagel. If I get my bagel, I will post it 
in the members discord in food chat because that's what food chat is for as a traditionalist i i can't call that a bagel are you seeing what's about it is not a bagel okay i am going to post this in food chat when i get my bagel and we can debate yes. it there yeah, I would love to see that because I'll I'll give you cinnamon raisin, I'll give you everything, I'll give you you know all that, but jalapeno cheddar. Huh. Eric Frazier in chat says Jack is a true Californian now. Went from being completely unaware of the existence of schmear to getting locked schmear on his bagel. Yeah, it's funny what twelve years in LA will do to you. <laughs> I do approve of the lock schmear though. That I approve. Oh man. Rob Sings is saying, or asking, I suppose, I don't remember seeing all these holds before. What up? I mean, like we were talking about a little bit earlier, there have been a lot of changes and modifications to the tank farm and to the GSE, and this vehicle is not completely uh, the same as the previous vehicles. So, difference in vehicles, difference in GSE, and, I mean, SpaceX is attempting with Starship to load, oh, what is it, something like 5,000 tons of propellant in, like, an hour or 50 minutes? That is no small feat. It's, oh, yeah, no, it, it's it's impressive. It's extremely impressive. And I, I, it's one of those where you'd rather take the time to have a hold than load up all of that fuel and go, eh, we can't do it, and unload and yeah. as evidenced by the evacuation of the village and the road closures, this is not a trivial operation. This is a hazardous operation, given the huge amount of methane and a huge amount of oxygen involved, even for a wet dress rehearsal when a launch or a static fire is not on the cards. So you want to do it right. And if you see any issues pop up while you're attempting it, you darn sure don't want to just continue willy-nilly. And the interesting thing... Go ahead. Uh, I was I was gonna say that even if they had attempted a partial load, that kind of load that we saw today is not a, it it's not the one that you will see from a partial load test. I believe the one that we see usually for a partial load test is they load uh, about like two or three rings of methane in in terms of like the frost that we see on the methane tank of the booster then the liquid oxygen is like maybe up to the to the top of the chines and then the ship we usually tend to see like a little bit like in the case of the ship we actually tend to see less uh on a on a partial propellant load test but today we saw more on the ship and less on the booster so uh, overall, it didn't look because one could make the the argument, oh well, but what they were actually doing is a partial load test, and given what we saw in previous attempts, they first they don't evacuate the village or even Starbase at all, because when we say they evacuate the village, that's the residents and also the employees that are living there, and also the employees that are working at the production site, so all of them get evacuated they don't go to work basically and we see sometimes the the buses that shuttle them between the the village or the production site to outside of the blast danger area so it is not something that is that that, that is done with a with a partial load of propellant and again uh as i was saying before the amount of frost the amount of propellant that we saw loaded today does not really make us think that they, that it was a partial load test. This was completely a, an attempt at a wet dress rehearsal and obviously it seems like it it had an issue at some point in the count during the propellant load and they had to stop. And uh, I'm sure you guys were mentioning this. I, I had to, to go out like for, for a little bit uh, out there when you started. But it is true that they have installed so many new systems, so many new things. Um, I was actually talking about this with, with Jax from Dream Watchers, and he pointed out, that, it, and it is completely true, that the amount of hardware that they have installed for this sort of extension, the amount of subcoolers and pumps and things like that, that for a any other rocket, that is probably like twice or, or, or thrice the amount of, of pumps and subcoolers that you can see on any other tank farm of any other rocket. 
right? So it's a lot of hardware that they have that they have actually installed on on this tank farm, and it is bound to happen. It is bound to 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 break when you put something new that you have not tested before. No, oh, I'm just update. Gonna, I was update. gonna. You got it, Jack. Yeah, uh, the road. A text has gone out from Cameron County's. Um, well. Automated update system saying that the beach is open, so we should see these cars leave the roadblock here momentarily. Let's see what happens. And as to the question of why haven't we seen them before, we actually saw them very early on with a testing of the booster and at, at the OLM back with. Booster 4 and the early testing of Booster 7, we had a, a bunch of holds usually where they had to retest again within the same closure window. But yeah, you can see there now the first car going down the, the road. There you go. Well, Welp indeed. Yeah. I guess we should probably mention like when could they attempt again? And I sort of pointed out that out before. Um... There you can see the first cars arriving at the launch site. Um, currently, so they have that holiday on Monday, you guys, uh, on the U.S. You have the President's Day, I believe it is, right? Woo! Yep. America! Tell you what. <laughs> and so the next available opportunity will be on Tuesday, and there's actually a road closure possible on Tuesday from 8 a.m. Central to 8 p.m. Central. So it should be... Our next opportunity, our next uh, chance to see a fully frosted Starship stack. That will be interesting to, to see that. So Tuesday up next as the potential opportunity for the full wet dress rehearsal of this vehicle. So it goes. Let's hang out a little bit longer and uh, answer some questions and whatnot as we wait for crews to return to the pad. By the way, I, I am... I I am curious if they're going to restack this thing. Go ahead, Sawyer. No, I was just going to say, I do appreciate in the United States on the, you know, around President's Day, that they have nice mattress sales in honor of my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, what kind of mattress are you are you uh, rocking, Sawyer? Are you a uh, spring guy? Are you a foam guy? What do you... What, what do you... I, I've got a foam topper uh, on it, and... I'm such a king that I have a king mattress. Oh, I don't even have that. <laughs> Alex, what are you, are you? Are you a spring man? Are you a foam man? Are you a waterbed guy? I bet you're a waterbed guy. <laughs> I have actually not tried waterbeds or anything Good. like it. Don't. I'm not. I, I don't really know about mattresses, to be fair. Um, all right, all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Azaret, thanks for becoming a Padrat member. Mark K is asking, will we have a successful orbit and catch either booster or ship this year? Mm. Sawyer, I'll let you go first. Um, I can definitely say we'll have a... I think it's safe to say that there will be a successful orbit. Um... I don't think we're anywhere close to catching yet. I think that's still another year at least out. But as long as everything goes well with Flight 3 here, or even Flight 4 if it needs to with the suborbital trajectory, I see no reason that it can't reach orbit this year. Yeah, I think orbit, yes, catch, no. Um, Alex? Yeah, I think I, I think there's a good chance they, they reach orbit. I mean, if by orbit you e even mean yeah, just yeah. completing the burn. Orbit uh, and air of, Yeah. Like, even if you mean a proper orbit, I think they may try that towards the end of the year. It's it's not a, it's not out of the question. Uh, but even the suborbital kind of trajectory, kind of orbit, on quotes, right, uh, that they're targeting for these initial flights, I, th I think... Ship 28 has a good chance of actually achieving that. But we'll see. And a catch, as you as you mentioned, yeah, that's probably a 2025 kind of thing. Just like Starlink or Starship and things like that. That might be a 2025 thing. 
We'll just have to wait and see. Um, speaking of seeing, Monty, with the store purchase, got all three patches. Thank you for that, Monty. As a reminder, we did launch our patch for Flight 3. It's in the store. It has arrived to our warehouse. It has not begun shipping yet, but the patch exists. We have real physical photos of the real patch. It looks beautiful. And as with all of the patches, we only ordered a certain amount of them. Uh, it's remarkable to me that we still have patches from Flight 1 and 2 available, but those are going to go away pretty soon here as they all get bought up. And eventually, Flight 3 patches will go away too. So if you want a patch, I would get it now and not wait if you at, are at all able. And the patch design comes on other design or other in other mediums as well it comes in a sweet orange shirt and also other shirts that are not orange but why would you want those and uh yeah the patch the patch exists there's also a whole bunch of last chance merch that we're going to clear out of the store ahead of flight three you know stuff that we had in there for flight two and flight one so if there's something from uh the last chance collection that you want to snag do it now because it is your last chance by the way, there's Seriously. different mediums, there's different smalls, there's different larges. Wow, so I also like that singer that that Kevin just swooshed. That is part yeah. of the graphics that we're using. There we go. Look at that. Nice. The swirly clouds. Yeah. It's a it's a quality stinger. Or the fact white, that Ryan animated the swirly clouds is just the best. I yep. I really wish we could do like... He's just doing it over and over <laughs> again now. <laughs> I really wish we could do like a like an animated patch that does that, but sadly the technology is not at that point. Yeah, when, when everyone has we'll be selling it. <laughs> when everyone has augmented reality sunglasses, uh, we'll yeah. do like an, an animated patch. Like you look at the patch and it the sunglass the glasses like recognize that you're looking at it and it animates. <laughs> it's like some Ruben Wu stuff right there. Uh, Paul Woolley, thank you for the super chat. They say, hi, goes, hi, guys. Do you know anything about an all-British crew this year I saw on BBC's website? Yeah, there was there was a comment uh, a while ago, or a sort of a news piece uh, talking about that. I'm not fully sure what's going to happen with that. Uh, I think we actually featured that on Twist, which, by the way, you should watch later because we're preparing already the the twist episode for for later today. Obviously, we couldn't publish it while we were live because otherwise, uh, you 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 get very distracted with a with with a wet dress happening. But yeah, I and so I I really don't know what's gonna happen to that. I'm I'm sure that it's probably gonna be something that they may arrange with the SpaceX directly or like with with Ax like maybe through Axiom. I'm not fully sure. Uh, anonymous with more store purchases saying, are we sure they're going for the same trajectory? Maybe they're doing the paperwork to change it along with the license. Well, uh, if by trajectory you mean from start to end, the end point might be different. That's a possibility. It could be yeah, that well, it is landing on the on the Pacific on the Indian Ocean. One of those things where we just have to wait and see. Uh, and Scott, thank you for the store purchases, getting the patches. There's also, you know, if you don't want to do a store purchase, there's also the membership program. Another great way to support what we do. We had so many people coming out, gifting the memberships on this stream, getting memberships on this stream. The membership program rules. There's so much cool stuff in there, including the uh, 4K multi-view, which is available as a member perk, where you can see all of the cameras, or, well, we have a lot of cameras, so not all of the cameras, but many of the cameras. And oh, see, no, they, they swipe. It is all, it, okay, it oh, is yeah. all of them. Yeah, yeah. It, it cycles through. Uh, so, yeah, the, the, the 4K multi-view for members is awesome. And, actually, that's going to continue after we stop streaming the wet dress rehearsal. So if you're an avid Starbase live viewer, but you just want more cameras and you got a gifted membership or you're thinking of becoming a member, that is a super good reason to become one. 
So thank you again to everyone coming out with the memberships on this stream. You guys are the best. Uh, speaking of the best, Chad Willis says Loch, ne Loch Ness Monster. I thought Sawyer would like that, <laughs> so I decided to call it out. Uh, Grebo7UK saying, speaking from Edinburgh, Jack, what do you have against the kilt? They are super cool. I don't have anything against kilts. I think kilts are cool. I just don't want to wear one. Nobody wants to see that. Uh, Gabe, thank you for the story purchase. They say Jack did a good job selling the patch. Now I am a Starship patch and metal print collector. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, and it goes without saying, the metal prints part of the uh, part of this part part of the proceeds from the sale of the metal prints go to the person who shot that particular image. So, whoever's metal print you were buying, absolutely appreciates it. One, just because it's an honor that you would like any of our work enough to put it up on your wall. But uh, two, because th that support goes not only directly to NSF, but also partially to the photographer who shot the image. So thank you for that, Gabe. Brian Green with a $10 super chat. Brian coming out in force with the support on this one. Uh, they say the Earth's rotation really makes my day. That's yeah. for you, Sawyer. But NSF is like the vacuum of space because they take my breath away. Oh my god. I've awesome always grind. wondered. From, go ahead. I've always wondered. See, now, now he, he made that, that pun. I've, I've always wondered, is that, is that Brian Greeny, the physicist? I'm sure not, but let's see, because I, I pick up on some names here when, when we are on, on stream, and so nobody knows him. Okay. No, cool. Brian, no. Brian has, I don't, I mean, I don't know who, like him personally, but, uh, I mean, I see his name pop up all the time in chat. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean the physicist. <laughs> oh, there's a, there's a physicist that is called Brian Greeny. Yeah, so yeah. Shows or, you or how much is it's green or greeny? I don't know. It's written the same way. <laughs> Shows you how much I know about phys physics. Uh, yeah. John Depker, thank you for the super chat. This is a serious question for Jack. Was the kilt clan specific or just a general pattern? I don't understand the question. Basically, there's... So, in Scotland, they have the different clans. So, you know, they'll have their own... Um, oh, I forget the... Not an emblem, the... I, I, I'm so sorry I'm messing it up for people, but there are certain tartan colors depending on different clans. So, are you just going generic, or is it a specific clan's color scheme that you're going for? I'm not. I'm not gonna wear. I'm not going for anything. I'm not gonna wear a kilt. Chris, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Michael, thank you for the store purchases. They say, getting them before they're gone. Keep up the great work, guys. Thank you for that, Michael. John, thank you for the support. They say, I have more patches than Snake <laughs> Liskin. Uh, will you stop with the? I'm not even gonna acknowledge it. Moving right along, anonymous. <laughs> With a store purchase, they say Trogdor. I love it. Uh, Jonathan, thank you for the store purchase. They say thanks for all the hard work. Eddie, thank you for the store purchase. They say go Starship. Jonathan, uh, again, saying thank you for the hard work. And Matthew, thank you for the super chat. They say, what's going on? Is this two aborted wet dress rehearsals in a row? Which follows into, uh, I think the last question we'll take here, which is Pete J asking, is it possible that there potentially a new process of starting prop load of ship first is causing problems for loading booster. It's possible. We can't really say with any authority, but hmm. interesting that we've seen two aborted wet dress rehearsal attempts now. And uh, the next attempt, Alex, will be probably Tuesday, right? Yeah, Nominally. early on Tuesday at least uh, with that 8 to 8 uh, road closure that they have. And another thing that I would like to point out, though, uh, we see those chopsticks that they have closed, and I see a lot of people confused in chat, and that's that's normal. Uh, about what what does that mean? Does does that mean that they are destacking or something? And the answer is maybe not. And here's that picture from flight to wet dress rehearsal. So you can see the chopsticks were actually not open for the wet dress re uh, the wet dress rehearsal of flight two. They were slightly away from the ship. But they were not completely open, as we saw earlier today. So just them closing, it doesn't really mean uh, 
the end of the world or, or like the, they're going to destack or anything like it. Uh, it's just part of the process. It may be, as you, as we mentioned before, that since they're not testing until Tuesday, then why have the, the chopsticks open, right? For so many days, maybe just have them a little bit closer. Otherwise, they're going to be, they're going to get some strains on, on the arms. You know, it's going to be, oh my God, open all <laughs> the arms open all the weekend. That can be done, right? We don't want the tower to, to get cramps. <laughs> <laughs> Rob B in chat saying, testing is not just always a wet dress rehearsal or whatever we expect. I mean, yes, but also the village was evacuated and we saw them do road closures the same way that they do for launch and the same way they've done for previous wet dress rehearsals. So the evacuation of the village without a launch and the uh, no overpressure notice, like you, we, we can read the tea leaves and sort of know what's going on. Today was a wet dress rehearsal attempt. It was aborted, alas, but that is just how it goes. Really quickly here, Anonymous, thank you for the support with the store purchase. They got to catch them all. Thanks, guys. <laughs> patch them on. They're patch them on. You got to catch them all. Um, <laughs> and and Stuart, thank you for the store you message. Gotta catch Sawyer, the patch. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sawyer, do you want to uh, to read this final store message here? Sure. Pirate walks into a bar. It was at that moment he realized that his patch was on the wrong eye. Hey. I like that fun, one. Fun fact. Pirates and the eye patch is so that you could go below deck where it was really dark and above deck alternately without having to acclimatize your eyes to the darkness or the light. Like when you go below deck, you use your patch eye. When you come above deck, you use your non-patch eye. Or so I'm told. Uh, anyway, I heard the same thing. So this has been me. this has been pirate facts with Jack. If you want more pirate facts, uh, press two. If you want more what pirate this, facts, movie you can also watch NSF Live later today. That's true. <laughs> oh yeah. I wonder if I bet you EJ has some good pirate facts. Oh, it's the movie phone hold music. You All right, well, pressing number two. <laughs> <laughs> Chat is just all number two right now. Yeah. Uh, all right, you scurvy dogs. That has been another NSF live stream of Starbase testing. Unfortunately, we didn't get a full wet dress rehearsal today, but that's why you test. Alex, thank you for being on stream, good buddy. It's always a pleasure and definitely looking forward to uh, our next two things are going out, which is going to be this week in space flight, the weekly episodes on Friday, and then after that we're gonna see you two guys on nsf live so looking forward to that and also with ej as well so i'm gonna be tuning in <laughs> plenty more content coming down the pipe today so stay tuned sawyer thank you for uh, being on stream as well always a pleasure and uh good news bad news for some of you the uh nsf live is with our faces so you will get to see us in a little bit and we hope that we will see your names in chat in a little bit too. Yeah, I'll give a report on how delicious my bagel was on NSF Live. Deal. Adrian, and in food chat. And in food chat. Adrian Beal was also on chat. Bile. Or, Bile. Oh my god, why? I've reverted to saying his name wrong. Adrian Bile. Okay, Adrian Jack Bile. Oh my god, don't don't start. <laughs> Chris Bergen, the Burgenator, NASA Space Flight <laughs> Actual. <laughs> well, yeah, thank you. Was on earlier as well. And we also had Mr. Kevin Michael Reed operating today's stream, running in the giant human-sized hamster wheel that makes things go. So thank you to Kevin for that. And uh, thank you to Mary and Sean out in the field for doing their thing. Also, I'm Jack Byer. You can see my info right there in the top right. So with that, I think we will wrap things up. You can see Mary's info there. And uh, yeah, make sure you're following her if you haven't already. I mean, she is the OG. I guess I guess follow Sean as well. Sean's Sean's okay, I guess. Yeah, some uh, of the views were thanks to him. Indeed. Uh, no, for real. Sean's great. Follow Sean. Follow Mary. Follow everybody. With that, we will leave you scurvy dogs until the next time, and or this week in space flight, and or NASA space flight live, both of which are coming later today. So stay tuned, and we will see y'all next time, or in like a couple hours. And here we go. We have liftoff. Propulsion continues to be normal. Are you
Okay, chamber pressure looks good. Following up.